Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Frost Countdown Stadium here in Tiffin, Ohio, where tonight in round four of the state playoffs, the Cleveland Glenville Tarblooders welcome in the Van Wert Cougars. Hello, everyone. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Darren Gilbert and our entire WSN crew. And Gilly, when you talk about D1 talent, Cleveland Glenville's loaded with well, it. Oh, they bring a bunch of them this evening. It all starts with their linebacker that's committed to Ohio State. Uh, 6'3", 235 pounds, and they have athletes on both sides of the ball. And Van Wert, Aiden Pratt, what a fantastic player. He has six touchdowns last weekend. Six touchdowns, I believe, like we discussed, coming over five on the ground, one through the air. The critical one was late in the game to uh, Nate Phillips. They, they just find a way to get it done, and the winner of this game moves on to the Final Four. Let's take a look at the keys for the game. Let's start with the Van Wert Cougars. Number one, they need to continue to do what's got them here. Execute the game plan that the coaches have in place, set the tempo of the game, and get off to a fast, successful start. The last two games they've done that, they put the opponents on their heels. They need to do that tonight. Number two, sprinkle in a little bit of the run and pass with effectiveness, establishing a balanced attack running game while being able to utilize effectively Pratt's arm. They need to move the chains. Use the clock, move the chains. And number three, they need to make it a battle at the line of scrimmage, hat to hat from all positions while gang tackling and flying to the ball. Glenville possesses a potent running attack and it's gonna take more than one Cougar to bring the ball carrier down. Let's take a look at the keys there for the number one team in the state, the Glenville Tarblooders. Uh, three keys to the game. Number one, be physical at the point of attack and get positive yardage. Uh, on the ground or through the air. Two, they need to make sure they know where Mr. Pratt is at all times uh, because of his run, his RPO, his run passing ability and their offense they run, um, not only through the ground, but with his 39 touchdown passes he's had for the year. And number three, I believe they've got to get the ball to their playmakers on the offensive side of the ball and give each of them an opportunity to have the ball in their hands. It's a winter wonderland here in Tiffin, Ohio. It's Glenville, it's Van Wert, all the action right here on WSN. Welcome back to Frost Canal Stadium here in Tiffin, Ohio, where tonight the Van Wert Cougars take on the Cleveland Glenville Tarblooders. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Darren Gilbert, our entire WSN crew. And Gilly, if you, could, if you like winter weather, brother, we got a dandy. Where did this come from? <laughs> I mean, it's to the point now where it's hard to, to see the numbers on the uniforms. Well, I know this. We are warm and safe in the booth here. The crew, on the other hand, down on the field, and uh, they're very, very cold, and they are doing a fantastic job, and we're going to give you the best coverage we can. Van Wert will receive the first uh, kick here in the first half. Glenville will kick to them. Darren, uh, we talked earlier in the pregame. Uh, what a star-studded lineup this Tarblooder team has, just loaded with Division One prospects. On both sides of the ball, and Van Wert, you know, they don't have any slouches on there. They've got the the uh, Northwest Ohio Player of the Year and Mr. Pratt along with his teammates. And nice return there by Van Wert. So here come the Cougars, 12-1 and one on the year, 8-1 and one on the WBL. They offensively average 44.1 a game and giving up 18.4 a game. They are led on the field by number 15 quarterback Aiden Pratt, 6'4", 205-pound senior. On the year, he is 254 for 355 for 3,501 yards, 38 touchdowns and four interceptions. And when I say those stats, Darren, this young man takes care of the football. He takes care of the football, and once he secures it, it's going to be very difficult to take it from him. Van Wert comes in, like I said, 44-2 a game, 18-5 on the defensive end. They'll start out. This is Pratt. He's got one tail back to the right. He's got one single set to the left. He's going to roll to his right side, looking down the field. He's under pressure. He's going to throw down the field, and he just misses his receiver. And his intended target, if I can make it, is number 10. Kind of tough to make out the numbers in the well, snow smart you know, and, and, you know, here's the thing. This uh, footing is going to play, you know, it could wreak havoc on both ball clubs tonight because I don't think either coach 
or community expected this. I know I didn't coming up here. He was intended target was number 10, Garrett Gunter. You take a look at these receivers for Van Wert, and they are just absolutely electric. Crutchfield has 68 receptions for 948 yards. You take a look at Garrett Gunter with 847 yards. Connor Campbell is 624 yards, and Nate Phillips with 739 yards. So just a, an outstanding bunch of skill players they have. And then you look in the backfield, and he's got Braylon Parker, the 5'11 junior, has 151 carries for 814 yards but 17 touchdowns, he can really smell the end zone. Nice play there by A.G. breaking up the, the pass there. It's a third and 10 for the Cougars. Pratt rolls back in the pocket. He's going to roll off to his right. He's going to step up. He's going to try to run for it. He gets across the middle, and he's taken down. He comes up short of the first down. Big yeah, open field tackle there by Braylon West. See what the Cougars will do here early in the first quarter. And they're going to they're gonna go for it, Gilly, on fourth and about five. So Pratt's in the gun. He's got trips to the right. He's got two receivers to his left. And they're going to call off the dogs, and they're going to punt this one. And I think that's the smart move. You know, we, we come across the field before the game and had a chance to just have a casual conversation with Coach Wrecker. He seemed really loose yeah, he and did. really confident going into tonight's game. And it looks like Van Wert is going to take a timeout. They'll take a timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout here in the booth with 11.09 to go here in the first quarter. Tied at zero. Back here at Frost Countow Stadium, Cleveland Glenville Tarbletters, head coach Ted Ginn Sr. 12-0 on the season, 6-0 in the Senate Conference. They average 41.4 points a game, 4.6 points defensively. That's just amazing, Darren. But when you look at the Division I prospects they have on that defensive side of the ball, there's no doubt that they're really, really good. There's the kick. It's a low line driver, not much of a kick there, but it gets to about the 40-yard line, and that's where it will be down by Van Wert, and that's where the Tar Blooders will take over. Wow, that was really close of catching the heel of a Tar Blooder there on that kick. Crazy as it sounds, that's a pretty doggone good kick in this uh, conditions that we're playing in right now. So let's take a look at Region 14. Winner of this one goes on to the regional, or excuse me, is the regional champion. Be in the state final four. We talked a little bit about that. And right now, De Deontay Rucker has been the quarterback for this squad most of the season, and it looks like they're coming out with number seven, Deshante Jones, the 5'11", 230-pound junior. Makes you want to wonder if they're going to put the football in the hands of the athletes and try to run well, the football yeah, with the, with the, yeah, running I say, With the weather conditions, I, I would I got to believe that. This is Deshante Jones. He'll get the ball right now. Goes off the left side for a gain of about two yards. Take a look at Deshante Jones. He's got 108 attempts for 1,020 yards and 10 touchdowns. He had a high this year of 230 yards against Olin Tangy Liberty. So uh, he is a quality athlete, and uh, they're going to put the ball in his hands for right now. Dotson or Kraken on the stop there with the help of Parker for the Cougars. So Deshante Jones is in the gun. He's got two to the left, one to the right. He's going to hand the ball off. Up to the left side for a gain of about four yards, and they'll be gang tackled by a host of Cougars. And that's number six for the Tar Blooders, and that is Javon Goodson, 5'10, 215 pound senior. You look at look at all these D1 prospects, and, and the number one guy they've got here is the linebacker and number eight, Arvell Reese, 6'3, 245 pounds. He's an Ohio State commitment. He's got eight tackles for a loss, 41 tackles, and five sacks. So everybody in the country wanted that young man, along with Bryce West, the defensive back, and those two form a really good combination on the defensive Not side. Not too shabby, huh? Here comes number seven, Deshante Jones, as he's got a big gain there. He's going to cross midfield for a first down. Appeared to be chased out of bounds there by Luke Wessel. Leland Smith Insurance Services, your first call for your all your insurance need. Leland Smith is our first down sponsor. So Cleveland is going to keep it on the ground. And, and who can blame him, Darren, in, in Well, you got to think absolutely. that this favors Glenville, you know, with, with their ability to run the football, not take anything away from Van Wert. Sure, sure. But uh, 
you know, Mr. Pratt's arm is going to be very difficult to throw in these conditions and, tonight. And now we see Deontay Rucker, the starting quarterback, is in the game, and he's flanked onto his right side by number 15, Maquan Gravely. And they'll hand the ball to Gravely as he goes to the left oh, side. Nice and play there by Mr. McCracken. Mr. I McCracken, what a great job by number 23, Damon McCracken. We talked about him all last week, Darren. He had a fantastic game. Oh, here it hits you. I mean, he's one of those kids that loves the game of football, and here strap it on, and, and he's going to give you four solid quarters. The linebackers are really good for Van Wert. A little undersized, but boy, they're athletic. They're and, athletic, and they fly and the ball. fierce yeah, competitors. Absolutely. So 9.18 to go, second and 12 from the 43-yard line. Glenville on the drive, 9.12 to go. Still not at zeros here in the first quarter. Danny Hobart, Darren Gilbert from Frost Cownow Stadium here in Tiffin, Ohio. This is Rucker in the gun. He's going to look across the field. He's under pressure. He throws off to the right. He's got his man out there. It's a completion made. Not much for the yardage. Goes to about another three-yard gain. His intended target was number 19. That's Demarion Witten, the 6'3", 200-pound junior. Ashton Bear on the stop. That young man has played through some injuries. It's great to see him back on the, Absolutely. the football field. Matter of fact, I think he was all district, if my memory serves me correctly. So that's a big, big plus for Van Ward having him back. That just gives them a little bit more depth in the secondary. Marion Witten, the target there, is a 6'3", 200-pound junior. He has 25 receptions, 604 yards, and five touchdowns. He's being recruited by several schools. So here come the Tar Blooders. If you're Van Wert, you got to be pleased. you got him in third and long. They're going with Deshante Jones, and he's, they're going to let him throw the ball off to the left side. And he's got a man wide open, and he's right at the first down marker. That's going to be another Leland Smith first down. So kind of threw him off for there when they brought in Deshante Jones, and he throws the ball, and he's typically their tailback. Well, I'll tell you, he threw it early and give his uh, receiver an opportunity to square up to – to the football, nice pitch and catch, nice first down. And really, Gilly, you can't fault the defensive backs from Van. They have to play off because of the slick surface out there tonight. You can't play right up on top of them. Correct. Yeah, yeah it's just a nice pitch and catch. So this is Rucker. Deontay Rucker is in the gun. He's got a tailback on his right side. He's got one to the left. He's got two receivers to the right. He's going to hand off to the first man up, and he's going to go to the left side and go down the sidelines. And that's number six, Javon Goodson. As he carries the ball, and he gets another Leland Smith first down. So they are moving the chains, Darren, and it's a methodical drive, but right now you take what you can get in this kind of weather. Boy, the speed, you know, when they get to corner turn to get their shoulders square, they are really, really fast. And they're crew, not, they're crew not, with yeah. the tackle there, They're partner. not going a lot through the through the tackles, are they? They're, they're, they're getting the speed on the outside. Mm -hmm. So this is Rucker in the gun. He's got Goodson beside him. He's going to hand the ball to Goodson. Goodson goes off to the left side. He's going to be Taken down for about a four or five yard gain. Good hard running there. McCracken and Jones appear to be coming off the pile there for Van Wert. That'll make it second and three from the 13. You take a look here at the instant replay and you see Goodson just jumping over the defender. Well, and Pratt here. made a great inside move there. He just happened to slip, or I think he would have been in the backfield. Our instant replays are made possible by Lee Kinsel and Irvin Road and Van Wert. Take a look at our pre-owned specials at LeeKinsel.com. This is Rutgers. He hands the ball to Goodson up the middle, and they're going straight off tackle right up the middle and close to another first down. We'll see where they mark it. And, yes, they are going to say it is another Leland Smith first down. Logan Dotson on the stop. Got him by the ankles. That'll put him in the red zone. Our red zone sponsor is Young's Transfer Station. Whatever the job, when you're ready to dump your junk, bring it to Young's. Open to the public Monday through Friday, 8 to 4. Young's Waste is our red zone sponsor. Bring up first and 10 from the 10-yard line. This is Rucker in the gun. He's got Deshante Jones right behind him. He's got two receivers off to his right. He's going to hand the ball to Jones. He goes up the middle, and he's going to get a gain of maybe about two yards. That'll bring up second and eight from the eight-yard line. Appear to be Dodson, McCracken on the stop. Here's a replay. Nice job by the offensive line. And they're going to say second and five. That's a generous spot there. It didn't look like he was that far along, but they'll go second and five from the six-yard line. Carson Smith also in on the stop for Van Wert. Here come the Tar Blooders as they're trying to strike first blood. Yeah, trying to see where they're at. They're about the four. Yeah, it's about the, that's about the five. four or five yard line. This is Rucker in the gun. He's got Goodson behind him. He's going to hand the ball to Goodson. He goes up the middle. 
And not oh, much nice there. play there. And a great tackle. Who's coming off the bottom of that pile? Somebody <laughs> stepped right up there. Is that first? Number, let's see, that looks like 23, I believe that was Oh, is that McCracken? I believe it was McCracken, yeah. Oh, hey, look, wherever the ball is, you can count the McCracken. Here, let's see, see here's that. a nice replay. Nice camera work. Oh, nice form tackling right there. So that'll bring up third and five from the five yard line. Glenville's got three receivers to the right. Rucker's in the gun. He's got Goodson behind him. Rucker's going to roll out. He's under heavy pressure. He's going to roll to his right. He's looking downfield. He's going to throw to the end zone, and it's just underneath the arms of his intended target. That was number 18 for the Tar Blooders. Sean Williams, the 5'7", 135-pound junior, and that's going to bring up fourth down there. Yeah, Luke Wessel really, really pleased with his play right there with the little fist pump. That young man played a whale of a game last week in his secondary spot. I think they initially wanted to go to the left side to the receiver, and he slipped, you know, as soon as the ball was snapped, and I think that took away the opportunity, so they tried to go to their second option. So here we go, partner, fourth and five from the five-yard line. Big possession here for Van Wert. See if they can get a stop here. Rucker's in the gun. He's got Goodson to his left. They're going to hand the ball to number 18. He's going to the left side. He's going to get into the end zone for a tar blutter touchdown. Number 18, Sean Williams, the intended target on the last play as he goes into the end zone and he gets a Kitchens Incorporated touchdown. Touchdowns are presented by Kitchens Incorporated and Van Wert. Kitchens Incorporated has GE appliances and specializes in all your kitchen and bathroom remodeling needs. Stop in or call Shea today for a free estimate. Kitchens Incorporated is our touchdown sponsor. So Glenville draws first blood, Darren, and they go up at 5.09 to go here, 6 nothing on the Lottic Jewelry scoreboard. Yeah, the, the offensive line on the, especially the left-hand side, did a really good job sealing, letting him bounce the ball outside. It was just a race to the pylon, and Glenville won the, won the battle there and got to got to the end zone. Let's see if they can't get another Lee Kinzel extra point. Extra points are sponsored by Lee Kinzel on Urban Road and Van Wert. Take a look at our pre-owned specials at LeeKinzel.com. The kick is up, and it is no good. So Van Wert gets a little break there. So with 5.09 to go, the Glenville Tar Blooders strike first. They take the early 6-0 lead. You're watching high school football right here on WOSN. Welcome back to Frost Canal Stadium. Premier sponsor for the Van Wert Cougars is Cary Insurance in Grover Hill. Get a quote and see how much you can save from Cary Insurance, our premier sponsor. So the Tar Butters strike first, Darren. They go up six to nothing, kept the ball on the ground, threw the ball a few times to keep him honest. But for the most part, when you start out in the Wildcat package and your running back comes out in the quarterback position. Well, and, and you know, I think that could possibly be part of the strategy tonight with the weather changing. And, and you look at the weather at 28 Van, degrees. Yeah, and Van, Van Wert's ability to score, you know, those two films, those last two films is going to say a lot about Van Wert and their ability to score. And they jumped on both ball clubs early. And I think Glenville wants to try to maintain you know, the ground game number one and number two to take away some time possession away from Van Wert's offense. And here's the one thing too, Darren, that I think if you're Van Wert, you've got to have a positive approach. They didn't completely dominate them on that drive. It took some time and Van Wert played really stiff defense. So, so you know, six to nothing right now, if you're Van Wert, you're still really so much Oh, in he's got to be yeah. pleased with that, but you also yeah. got to give, you know, Glenville credit oh, third, third, what, third and 12? Yes, and, yes. And convert on a pass play and, um, well, you saw the advantage Glenville has with the team speed. We sure. absolutely saw that, yeah. So Glenville will kick off to Van Wert. Back deep for the Cougars. Looks like number six back there. It looks like Phillips. It's Nate Phillips. Trying to see who the other one is. Uh, we can get a visual here. <laughs> let you know. So here's the kick. Might be Connor Campbell. Up is taken by the up man, number 17. That's wise, I Bryce, believe. Bryston Wise as he gets up uh, to about the 25-yard line. That's where the Cougars will take over. So, Darren, last week against West Holmes, Aiden Pratt was just simply amazing. 30 of 39, 281 yards, one touchdown throwing, 103 yards, 27 carries, and five touchdowns on the ground. While playing defense, too. <laughs> yes, while playing defense. He was absolutely a one-man It was a team team. victory, though, yes. and Aiden will be the first one to, to speak of that. I mean, it uh, took a collective effort to get that win against the very good West Holmes team. So here's Pratt, and he hands the ball, and they're going to stop play right there, and they're going to say it looks like maybe Glenville was offsides. An encroachment here. Yeah, we'll have to see about that. Let's see what they call. 
offsides. I was correct on Glenville. That Good eye. The ball up five five yards. Well, it kind of it quit snowing, so I can see a it little did. bit. It <laughs> did. Well, the field's still white, but uh, I think it's going to remain white too. I think you're right. So here's Aiden Pratt in the gun. He's got Breland Parker to his right. He's going to hand the ball to Parker. He goes off to the right side. Gets good five-yard hard yards. It's going to be close. If not, he's, it's going to be second and short. I think if he had to do it over again, he'd have bounced that one outside. If you watch on this replay, he might have been able to pop it outside. Well, then again, did you notice who was right there? With, Arvell Reese, number eight. With, yeah, the big with time his long linebacker. arms, yes. yeah. But I'll tell you what, number 54 for the Cougars, and that's Logan Dotson was doing a great job of continuing to stay with that block. Well, and that's what they were doing last week. They were going hat on hat with the middle linebacker, the All-Stater, and, and Pratt broke free a couple times. That's what they've got to continue to do now. And that'll give Van Burn another Leland Smith first down. Here's Pratt as he throws to the right side. A little sidearm action there as he finds number seven, Parker. Ryland Parker, out of the backfield. Nice field. catch. A really nice catch, and that'll bring up second and about six at the 39-yard line. So 419 to go. The Cougars trying to respond. Here's Parker as he goes off the right side. He's got a little room there. Oh, he goes up for a down, nice didn't he? gain. Yes, he did, and a nice gain. And great upfield blocking by the Cougars as the, uh, li uh, the offensive lineman got into the secondary there and made some nice blocks. And he got a first down for Leland Smith Insurance. Braylon West on the stop for the Tarb Letters. So here comes Parker again as they found something Just here. Just banging his way right up in between the center and the guard position. Ryland Parker, just a fantastic job of moving the chains. That's going to bring up second and three. And they're going to go right back to Parker as they found something here in the middle. And he's going to be hit by Arvell Reese, the All-State linebacker, as he knocks him back down. Appears to be number 66 also stepping up. Philip Sains. I, I love the commitment that uh, Van Wert has shown to staying with the run, and the offensive linemen are not backing up. So here's Pratt in the gun. He's got trips to his left. He's got two to the right. He's looking across the field. He throws to the right side. He's got his man out there, and nice he's got a reception there. made by nice number 11, catch. Maddox Crutchfield. And I gave you Crutchfield's number earlier this, or the er, numbers earlier tonight, and just outstanding 68 receptions for almost 1,000 yards and 12 touchdowns. What a luxury to have when you have four receivers over 40 catches. So here comes Pratt. He's going to keep it himself as he goes up the middle. He gets up to the right side, and he's going to get a nice gain as he gets another oh, Leland him Smith for another first down. Two or three extra yards. Nice run by that young man. Leland Smith Insurance Services, your first call for all your insurance need. We're going to be calling a lot of Leland Smith Insurance if uh, Aiden Pratt has anything to do with it. He's moving the chains. And that's what they do. Absolutely. So 3-12 to go here in the first quarter. Cleveland Glenville ahead six to nothing. They missed the extra point. And Cleveland oh, Glenville is going to take a timeout. Time out, aren't they? And they're going to try to regroup here. So a great job by Van Wert. There's a timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout here. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Our scoreboard sponsor tonight is Lottox Jewelry, your family owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them in Coldwater or Van Wert or online at Lottox.com. Here come the Cougars as they come up to the line of scrimmage as they get out quick and they'll get a gain of about a yard. Not much there on the right side. Yep, Pratt decided to keep it. Clock continues to move at 2.56. Here comes Pratt. He's got Parker in the backfield with him. Pratt throws to the left side. He throws out to number 11, and that's Maddox Crutchfield. He's taken down. <laughs> He's hit quick by number four, and that's Jalen Carter, the 5'7", 140-pound senior. And my goodness, Darren, he got to the ball really Yeah, quick. took his feet right out from underneath him. I think uh, Critchfield, if he could have danced a little bit with on a, on a turf that was not so slippery, he may have been able to get around him. Here comes Pratt. He's in the gun. He's got Braylon Parker to his right. He's got trip receivers to the right. He's got a single receiver to the left. He's got number six off to the left, and that's Nate Phillips. And if they can get Nate Phillips in single coverage, they'd love to have that to the corner of the end zone. Let's see what Pratt calls here. There goes Parker as he moves off to the right. Pratt's going to look across the middle. He throws to the end oh, zone. He's, he's got, got his him. man out there. Touchdown, sure Cougars. Oh, my goodness. An what absolute strike to number three, Connor Campbell, as he beats his man to the end zone, and Aiden Pratt found him right away. Oh, my goodness, Darren. Watch this play. Uh, they just ex they spread the field so well and make the deep take what the defense gives you, and that young man happened to get behind Mr. Goodwin, and 
They found the end zone. And that is a Kitchens Incorporated touchdown presented by Kitchens Incorporated and Van Wert. Kitchens Incorporated has GE appliances and specializes in all your kitchen and bathroom remodeling needs. Stop in or call Shea today for a free estimate. Let's take a look at our, our extra point here, sponsored by Lee Kinzel, number 23 for the Cougars. This is Damon McCracken, the All-State linebacker. He puts it up, kick is up. And it is good. That's a big extra My point. My goodness, with 2.05 to go, the Van Wert Cougars lead the Cleveland Glenville Tar Blooders 7-6 right here on WOSN. Our red zone sponsor is Young's Transfer Station. Whatever the job, when you're ready to dump it, you junk it. Bring it to Young's. Open to the public Monday through Friday, 8-4. to 4. Young's Waste is our red zone sponsor. So what a response from the Van Wert Cougars, Darren, as Aiden Pratt throws a 30-yard strike right across the middle, and he finds Connor Campbell wide open. And like I said off air, Darren, that is a huge confidence booster because if you look at this Glenville team, the strength of their team is those defensive backs. They're exceptionally fast they and are exceptionally really good. athletic. But I'll tell you what, my money is on number 15 throwing the football. <laughs> he is such a gamer, is he not? Well, you've got receivers, you know, four receivers with over 40 catches. They run exceptional routes. We, that's what we talked to Coach we Rucker did. about yes, yes. at Marion. And th those kids are gamers. So an absolute strike. You know, you look at you look across the way, Van Wert, I mean, my goodness, for the conditions tonight, they brought a heck of a crowd. Oh, they brought a huge crowd. for the. You're right, for the conditions. So Van Wert McCracken will kick the ball off here. Linville's got two that back deep, and he's going to kick it off to the right side high. And nice catch by that young by the man. Young number 18 will receive it. He gets off to the right side, and oh, he's got a oh, lot of green in front of him. Yeah. And he's going to have to be forced out of bounds, and that is he is about midfield. That was number 18, Robbie. I'm sorry. Let's see, number 18 for the Tar Blooders. That is Sean Williams, and Sean Williams is electric, Darren. We've seen him twice tonight. He's got the touchdown for the Tar Blooders, and what a return man right there. Yeah, a couple missed tackles right there and bad angles, and that's what happens in special teams. If you don't execute, you could uh, give up long yardage, and Mr. Campbell right there, even though he you know, didn't get the tackle, he did push him out of bounds and saved Glenville from getting a touchdown right there. Our touchdown sponsor tonight is Kitchens Incorporated and Van Work. Kitchens Incorporated has GE appliances and specializes in all your kitchen and bathroom remodeling needs. Stop in and call Shea today for a free estimate. So the Tar Blooders are going to continue with their running backs in the Wildcat position. They've got Javon Goodson back there alongside Deshante Jones, and Jones is in the quarterback position. He's going to keep it himself as he goes off the left side and he goes across midfield. And a nice gain for the Tar Blooders. So there's a, there's a theory here. They're, they're, they're not going to put the ball in the air much, and they're not going to put their quarterback on the field if they can have the running backs get a direct snap. No, they're going to use a little bit of wildcat look, a little run pass option. And, well, and, and, and look. And he does a great job running the football. Why, why take an opportunity for an interception? Absolutely. This is number six with the ball. That Good job Dawn defensively Dixon. there. That and appeared here, to be Dotson. Yeah, and here's another theory too, Darren. You don't have to hand the ball off. You're getting the direct snap to the running back, so that 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 whole interaction between the quarterback and the tailback is eliminated in this weather. Well, <laughs> and you look at their offensive line: 320, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, 265, uh, 275, 305, and the smallest uh, happens to be 225 pounds. It's not bad for Division Four football. Absolutely, so. Shante Jones, he gets the ball. He's going to keep it himself as he fakes the handoff and nice take it down. Play. And what a play by Mr. number first. 53. Jordan first. Jo Jacob first Jacob comes first, up through the me. middle and does a fantastic job. Oh my! Watch this replay, Darren. He just shoots through that line. Nobody touches him. And my goodness, what a great job by that young man. Great job getting by Mr. Sains there, the right guard. Jacob first says, I don't care how big your linemen are. I'm quick and I can get through well, that. And that's, and that's exactly th th what he That does. front four, you know, last week they played a good-sized team across the, the front line, and we felt like after the game was over that they did their job defensively. And right now in this first quarter, Van Wert, you know, they're bending, but they're not breaking. And they're going to come back in with Deontay Rucker. Rucker's going to throw off to the left side. And oh, he nice play. Made the completion number 18, but what a job by number 28 for the Cougars. Mr. Reese Krug. Krug, what a great job of coming up and just smacking the receiver. And they are really playing tight defense right now. That's going to bring up a third and 13 situation. Yeah, because he was on the outside with the outside man and saw the ball coming and jumped off his route, defending his player and 
made a nice play. And it looks like Glenville may just let the clock go down here with nine seconds to go as they get a playoff. Rutgers in the gun. We're down to four, and it is not going to happen. And that will be the end of the first quarter. So after one played here at Frost Conall Stadium, the Van Wert Cougars shocking the world. They lead the Glenville Tar Blooders 7-6 right here on WOSN. Our first down sponsor tonight is Leland Smith Insurance Services, your first call for all your insurance needs. Contact Leland Smith, our first down sponsor. So a huge third down, Gilly, third and 14 from the 34-yard line. And the Van Wert defense right now, I'm going to tell you, they're winning the trenches. They're playing loose, and they're playing with no fear, and they have nothing to lose tonight. You know, got, a lot, got, not yeah. a lot of people in this, you know, in these stands sure. right now are giving them a chance other than, you know, the hometowners and a few other people, and it, as well as their coaches and their players. And right now they are, they're winning the battle right now, even though it's seven to six. This is Deontay Rucker. He's going to hand the ball off to number seven, Shante Jones, and he goes, oh, oh my, goodness. my goodness, a he big must have run. Hurt me. He did, and he is just barreling over people. And that, my friends, is how you run the football. Deshante Jones, a six foot, 220 pound bowling ball just goes through. Watch this, Darren, he did not stop and he just was knocking people to the ground. Two One tackles, tackle. three, yes. four, five. Dragon Crew appeared to be number 13 to finally bring him down, Ashton Bear. He's gonna bring up first and 10 from the 12 yard line. They got Deontay Rucker getting the call at quarterback now. As he's gonna go to number seven right up the middle and that's gonna be a tar blooder touchdown. Deshante Jones takes the ball right up the middle and those last two drives were really impressive. And that is a Leland Smith, um, excuse me, that is a Kitchens Incorporated touchdown. Wouldn't you like to be a fly on the wall or yeah. something or on a clipboard well, to listen to what Mr. Ginn's speech, speech was yeah. he, right there at the end of the first quarter? Before, well, I mean, he saw the, the, attitude thing, yeah. was, the attitude was totally different. Yeah, he saw the same thing we did. He saw the Van Wars went in in the trenches. The defensive line was really dominating the offensive line in Glenville, and he just came out in two plays right there, and they just changed the entire attitude. You're exactly right. So with 11.30 to go, Glenville goes up 12-7. to 7. Looks like they're going to go for two here, Darren try to get that 14 to seven point difference here. So Glenville will go for two and they've got uh, Rucker in the quarterback position. He's gonna hand the ball right up to number seven and he's gonna be stymied there at the line and he is not gonna make it in. I'm trying and to see who stepped up there for the big play that, for the stop. Deshante Jones tried to go in for the two point conversion. That was his, his drive folks and he gets denied and you oh, see this replay. Beautiful, got an instant replay coming Number here. 11 hits him first. And then he tries to oh, swing number 13. Out to the right side. Number 13 for the Cougars. And that is Ashton Bear as Ashton Bear takes him down. Again, this is a kid that didn't play the last two weeks, the last couple weeks because of a lower leg injury. You know, he's he's had a heck of a first half here for the Cougars. So with 11.30 to go, the Van Wert Cougars uh, still down 12 to seven to the Tar Blooders, holding their own, doing a great job in the trenches. Let's see if they can't uh, respond here as they did the last time they had the ball. Danny Holbert, Darren Gilbert from Frost, Cownell Stadium. And aptly pro, Appy, what's the word I'm looking for? A good name for a stadium, Frost, with the weather tonight. Yeah, I wanted I want to, to bring say. that up in pregame tonight, too, when <laughs> we were shivering and yes. watching the snow fall, yes, and it just were. kept getting heavier and heavier and heavier. Yes. It's nice to be able to to see out there now. Well, we got a call on the way up here, and the crew said you may be broadcasting on the outside. We weren't happy, but now that it's nice yeah, and warm. Yeah, but all the snow, you'd think it'd be, <laughs> they call it what, lake lake effect snow? Well, well you know yeah. what? <laughs> There's no lakes near here. There's no lakes here, yeah. No. <laughs> Maybe it's river effect snow, I don't know. Goodness. God bless the people outside doing the filming. Oh, they're doing a great job. Our crew always does a great job. I mean, you, you take a look at the people that work for us, and they, uh, they just continue to do a great job every week. So here come the Tar Blooders. They'll kick the ball off to Van Wert. Van Wert trying to respond here with 11.30 to go until halftime and a short kick, and it's brought up by the Cougars, and they go through the middle. Oh, they fumble, and the ball oh, goes Mr. on the ground. Crew I think he got ground, it back. I think he got it back. I think number 28, Reese Krug, but I think he got it back, Darren. We'll have to take a look here. But uh, Heck of a hit. Here's the replay on it. He got up ahead of steam, and I don't know who met him. Got by Reese. Oh, it happened to be. Uh, 
a shoulder, no, number 18. Yeah, he got it back. You can see on the replay that he got it back. So a great job by Reese Krug to recover sure that was. fumble. So let's see what the Van Wert Cougars can do. Down 12 to 7. Really yeah. good field position for they the They do Cougars. have great field. That was a vicious hit, Darren, too. So here's Pratt in the gun. He's back there with number seven, Brylon Parker. He's got trip receivers to his left, one one to the right, and the flag comes up. I think up we got an encroachment. Another encroachment. It looked yeah, there's, to me. Th there's two of them number on this nine, side. Yeah, number 99 was leading 99 clear and 74 across the line. Both yeah. Were, yeah, they had a helmet that was complete. <laughs> Let's put it this way. All I could see was the black helmet. You could not yes. see the, the football. Number 99, Ramir Askew, and number 74, Deshaun Malone. Deshaun Malone, the 5'10", 280-pound defensive tackle. And there's a nice run there, and that's going to bring it up close to a first down. It's going to bring up second down and about three. Reeves the on the stop. Sains. So here comes Pratt. He's got Parker off to his right, trips to the left, and a single receiver to the right. Pratt's going to keep it himself as he's going to pick up a first down as he goes off to the right, following his blockers, and he's thrown down by Everell Reese, the All-State linebacker. And Pratt says, I'll get that first down. And that, my friends, Bounced is, right up, didn't he? Yes, he did. That is a Leland Smith Insurance Services first down. Yeah, wow. he did a great job following his blocks. Nice job up front. Appeared to be number 64. Jacob Geeving. Nice job right. going behind him, getting as much as he could. Here's Pat Pratt in the gun. First and 10 from the 50-yard line. Pratt's going to look to throw the ball off to the right side. He's got a man down the right side, and he's got oh, a completion got out there. Is that Gunter? That is, you are correct. That is Garrett Gunter with a great catch, and he was being flanked the entire way by number nine for the Tar Blooders, and that's Malik Davis. And you watch this. Malik Davis is all over Garrett Gunter. What a sensational throw by Aiden Pratt as he finds his guy, the only place he could put that ball. Well, I think he wanted to go to the left initially, and there was just nothing there. I think you're right. There. I think I you're think, right, yeah. I think he, you know, he's trying to make a play, and Mr. Gunter wrestled that football away. Big play for the Cougars. And that'll bring up a, a five-yard run there, the play where we were talking there. We missed that second and five from the 15-yard line, so the Cougars are right in business. Here comes Parker off the right side as he tries to get outside, and a sensational tackle out there by number, number three. three for the Tar Blooders, Braylon, Braylon West, West. And yeah, he is the all-state defensive back that everybody likes. Yep, big play there by that young man, Bryce and Braylon. So here comes Aiden Pratt. Parker's in the backfield with him. Pratt's going to roll off to his left. He's got his man out there, and the reception is made. That's number six for the Cougars. Boy, he's going to be close to the sticks, Nate too, Phillips. partner. About a yard yeah, short. I was going to be say, about. It's going to bring up fourth down. That's going to bring up fourth and about a yard from the 10 yard line, Darren. So our red zone sponsor tonight is Young's Transfer Station. Whatever your job, whenever you're ready to dump your junk, bring it to Young's. Open the public Monday through Friday, 8 to 4. So here we go, Darren. Fourth and one. Let's see what Pratt and the guys can do. Pratt's in the gun. He's got Parker on his left shoulder. Snap there. Parker or Pratt comes up the middle. And I it think looks he's got like enough. He's got it. it looks like he's got enough. Aiden Pratt, the six foot four, 205 pound senior. Oh, we got a flag. Oh, we on got the a field. flag on the play. I did not see the flag. Let's see if we can see from the instant replay what happened. Oh, it looks like maybe a face mask. Is that what they're going to? When, when Pratt went through the hole, the defensive tackle. Yeah, it comes from around. that far side, didn't yes, it? Yes, it did. So let's see what they call here. Boy, if it is a face mask, it's that's going to put. Gonna it, it's, yeah, I was going to say, it's going to be huge. Let's see what they're going to call here. As the, the officials are discussing the play here, and here comes the official to make the call. It is a personal foul face nice mask, call. and I Good was call. correct. Yes, I thought I saw the defensive tackle reach around Boy, Aiden that's Pratt. Big. That is huge. Puts it at first and 10 on the 11-yard line. So here comes Pratt with Parker off to his right. He's got three receivers to the right. Pratt's going to take the ball. He's going to keep it himself. He goes up the middle. He goes towards the goal line, and he gets awful close. Aiden Pratt, the big 6'4", 205-pound senior, leading the Cougar offense. And that's going to bring up a second down and about one from the goal line. Going right behind Dodson and Bledsoe. Listen, I'm not I'm not one to tell Coach Rucker how to coach this game, but that ball would not come out of Aiden Pratt's hand right here. At the not when line. he's getting three, four, five <laughs> yards exactly. of crack running the football. So here's Parker in the gun. He's got Pratt in the gun. Excuse me. He's going to keep it himself, and does he get in? He gets in. That's a Van Wert touchdown. 
Kitchens Incorporated touchdown. Aiden Pratt goes across the goal line to give the Cougars the 13 to 12 lead. Big, big possession right there by the interior line. Jackson Jones, Devin Story, Jacob Geeving, Caleb Bledsoe, Logan Dotson. Great job by those interior linemen giving the cracks and opening them up and letting so Mr. Pratt go to work. Kraken will try to get our Lee Kinzel extra point. We'll see if he can't make it a 14 to 12 game. He snap, let's see here. Snap is back, hold is good. Kick is up and it is good. Extra points are sponsored by Lee Kinzel on the Urban Road and Van Wert. Take a look at our pre-owned specials at LeeKinzel.com. So with 8.33 to go, Darren, the Van Wert Cougars come alive again and respond as they lead the Tar Blooders 14 to 12. Extra points tonight are sponsored by Lee Kinzel on Urban Road and Van Wert. Take a look at our pre-owned specials at LeeKinzel.com. So the weather is cold outside. We take a look at the current radar, and it looks, Darren, like the snow is leaving us. Now the snow is going to stay on the field, but it looks like we are all clear for the second half, which is great news. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So, uh, wow. I, we, we were talking off air, Darren. I, I, I'm just so impressed with this Van Wert Cougar team and the way they just keep fighting and keep coming back. It's 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 like it's a magical season right now, and, and it's, I don't think it's going to stop. <laughs> uh, what what did Coach say over at Marion? He does not have to get on these no, kids. No, no. He, he can see it, the looks in their eyes, and he just turns it over to his senior leadership, and the underclassmen follow the seniors, and that's the way it should be. And, man, you know, they bounce right back with seven. Nice points right there. Now they just got to buckle down defensively and get a stop and put Glenville in a position where they have to punt the football. Back deep for the Cougars, number two, Bryce West. And they're going to keep the ball on the ground. And it'll be brought up by, let's see, number eight. That's him again, I believe. I believe. And the ball's on the oh, ground. Yes, the ball is. is out. And it is out, but it is recovered. Oh, oh no, it's, out. Man, it's recovered by it. the Cougars. They the sure Cougars do. recover it. Number nine for the Cougars. That is Colin Haggerty, and Darren, it got dropped on the carpet two times. Twice. And Colin Haggerty for the Cougars recovers it. Yeah, here's the replay. This is number 18 for the Tar Blooders. We've called his name quite a bit tonight, oh, Sean Oh, nice Williams. play there by number two. And I thought it was going to be recovered Campbell right coming here. coming in there with his fist and just knocking the ball out. Unbelievable. So Van Wert has an unbelievable chance to jump up on him. Two scores here. Let's see if Aiden Pratt and company can make this one hurt. Yeah, Bloodworth from uh, Glenville had a chance to, to get on the football. He did the right thing going after it and diving on it. It just squirted away from him. So here comes Pratt in the gun. He's got Parker to the right. He's got trips to the left. He's got a single receiver to the right. He's going to keep it himself. He goes off the right side, and he'll be taken down by a host of tar blooders. And he'll pick up maybe about two yards. That'll bring up second and eight from the 40-yard line. Solid effort there by that young man. Took four of them to bring him down. So you got to believe here, Darren, with 8.07 to go, Van Wert wants to kill some of this clock with also moving the ball down the field and hopefully putting it in the end zone. No, I'm just, you know, I was just watching Glenville substituted. They went, took a DB out, put a lineman, in, and look what just happened. And there's a connection here, and a nice strike to number six for the Cougars. That's Nate Phillips. He's and right Aiden about Platt. the one-yard line. And he, what a pitch and catch as he throws it to... Number six, Nate Phillips. Watch this sidearm sling, though. He gets it out to him right in front of the defensive back, and he just cuts down the middle, and away he goes. Number six, Nate Phillips. You remember Phillips. seeing that play last week? I did. We saw it several That's, times that last was week. The, that was the yeah. one last last week that, that they're deciding touchdown with about four minutes to go. But I watched, partner. They, they subbed out. They subbed out a DB and put a defensive lineman in, and Van Warren went right to the air with it. And Glenville's got a player down on the far left side. Uh, the medical staff is attending that young man. Let's hope he is okay. Let's take a look at our bracket for tonight's winner. In Division four here. If Glenville wins, you see that they will play the winner of West Branch and Jefferson area. So the other bracket, Wyoming and Taft, and Steubenville on the far bracket. And if Van Wert wins, they will play the winner of Cincinnati, Wyoming, and Cincinnati Taft. So you got to believe that game. Uh, maybe, uh, well, they've already got it here at Historic Crew Stadium. So, uh, yeah, those are the brackets for both those teams. And uh, let's let's hope it's the second bracket. That's there. neat. I'm glad they, you know, was able to save the Crew Stadium and, and they're playing, you know, games there. I knew, though, there was some talk that the OHSA is trying to, to get the games back in the Columbus area. So 
get a be number. interesting yeah. to see if they do it right there at Crew Stadium. We get a number on the injured tar blooder on the far side. They've got the medical staff taking a look at him. Uh, he was down. Let's see, and now they've got him sitting up. That's a good sign. Number, I think, yes, it is number 10 for the Tar Blooders, and that is Gerald Goodwin, the 6'1", 195-pound senior. He's, we've called his name quite a bit. Yeah, he's the, one, he's the one that allowed yes. Campbell to get back behind him in the second. He, he, was, playing in the, was. Yeah, he was playing in the corner position. So uh, when you look at the van, we're faithful, and those kids are fired up right now. <laughs> that's, that's good seeing that that's young great. man getting up, but he's walking really, really gingerly. Yeah, I, I got to believe that uh, he's going to have to take a breather here and uh, get him some uh, medical treatment. Let's hope he's okay. So here come the Cougars, first and goal, as they are in the Young's Waste Red Zone. It just makes you wonder if Mr. Pratt didn't see that defensive substitution, that lineman coming in and the DB coming out because he he exploited something or the coaching Absolutely. staff did. So there's Pratt in the gun. He's got Parker off to his right shoulder. He's got two receivers to the right, one to the left. 7.48 to go. Van Wert leads 14 to 12. Here's Pratt. He's going to keep it himself. He goes up the middle and he's going to get into the end zone for a Van Wert touchdown. My goodness, another Kitchens Incorporated touchdown. And that moves the lead up to 20 to 12 for the Van Wert Cougars as they take advantage of the turnover. Well, my question is here on the, the replay, where are the linebackers? Well, they weren't in the play room. <laughs> well, and that's Absolutely. a good, and you know what? That's a credit to the front five of Van Wert opening those holes up, giving him some to room to, to yeah. work with. And, and I said it earlier, Darren, those offensive linemen are getting up to the next level and really taking advantage of that, Absolutely. that athleticism. So here we go for a Lee Kinzel extra point. Damon McCracken will try to tackle on number 21 for the Cougars. Snap is back. Hold is good. And the kick is up. And it is good. Oh, Damon and there's McCracken. a flag. There's a flag. And let's see what happens here. So we've got a couple people down and being helped up. And let's see what the flag is. I'm going to say roughing the kicker. I was going to say the same thing. If we could take a look at that replay and see if McCracken was ran into on the play, they'll probably tack that on to the kickoff. The officials are discussing Which is this. a huge plus Absolutely if you're a fan work because you can kick that thing into the ground. Yeah, here's our instant replay, and here's McCracken as he goes for the kick. Oh, my goodness, and the number, number two, two number, put his shoulder, Bryce number West. Number 19 got a little bit yeah. extra cricketer in there. Not a good look right there for that young man is Bryce West, the All-State defensive back. Kind of a kind of a late hit there, and that's what the call is going to be is a personal foul, and that'll tack on 15. So you're right, Darren, that Jamarian is a huge Whitten. call. Yeah. Just makes you wonder if that's a little bit out of frustration. It could be. It could be. Uh, Darren, we come in here and we look at these uh, unbelievable accolades for the Tar Blooders. Arvell Reese, Braylon West, Bryce West, Deshante Jones, Damar and Witten, Freddie Johnson, the offensive lineman, 6'5", 320. They're all being recruited by Big Ten or But Max here's Foles. what's more impressive. Yes. The most impressive in my eyes is 49 points allowed. And That's right now, Van Wert's got 21. almost halfway That's unbelievable. there. That's, and you're you can right. tell the frustration starting to set in a little bit. Well, they've they've not been in this situation all year. I mean, they've dom you look at their schedule, and they've dominated four well, or five shutouts. And, and not only did that, they Did we not they see beat, the same thing last week? Absolutely. They beat Illyria Catholic, which is a solid program. They beat them like a drum last week. And here the Cougars are standing up saying, no, not us, not tonight. So what a great response by Van Wert. And that's what you have to do, Darren, to win a game like this. When they turn the ball over, you have to capitalize. So 7.44 to go. Glenville down 21 to 12 to the Van Wert Cougars. And, uh, you're right, Darren. We What's the old song by Tom Petty? Won't back down. Oh, I won't. And, and they're not going to back down. Right. <laughs> they will not back down. Do you think uh, our director, Ben Reif, wants me to sing? I'm, I'm pretty sure he does not. Um, so you just br keep bringing up the songs, and I'm not singing. Oh, boy. <laughs> Here comes Van Wert. They're going to kick off. Cleveland's got two receivers back deep, and that ball is at midfield. So they're going to oh, uh, onside, kick. onside kick. Did they it? get it? And they Van Wert saying they got it. it. Van Wert attempts the onside kick, and let's see who's got it. They're sorting out the pile. What a unbelievable attempt by Van Wert. And there is a flag on the field. 
So let's see what happened here. Did they touch it before the 10 yards? And they're going to say Cleveland Glenville has the ball. And that's okay. Absolutely. If anything, you know, you put you put them on their heels right there. Well, the unexpected. Mm -hmm. and that's just amazing that, uh, you know, right, you talked about it earlier. Before the game, you and I, was uh, we were out at midfield talking to Coach Recker. He was so loose. Oh, His yeah. kids were smiling. And, and he thinking, was too. Oh, they were. And they were like, hey, we got, we're, we're playing with house money. We're, we're going we're gonna to do great tonight. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and right now they are. Let's hope they keep it up. So here come the Tar Blooders. This is number 16. This is Rutgers. He hands the ball off. Goes off to the left side. It's number 15 as he tries to get to the corner. He gets pushed out of bounds. Number 15 for the Tar Blooders. That's McQuain Gravely, the 5'10", 140-pound junior wide receiver. Here's a replay bouncing the ball outside. Parker had a shot at him. He just broke away from him. Broke a couple tackles. And they just keep bringing athletes at him, Darren. They are just stocked with athletes, and they try to get it around the corner. So Deontay Rucker is back in the game at the quarterback position. He's flanked off to the left side. Appear to be Crew knocking him out at the boundary. This is Gravely. This is Rucker again as he keeps it himself as he gets off to the left side. And they are picking up yardages in chunks right now as he fakes the handoff to Gravely. And number 16, Deontay Rucker, keeps it himself. He's got long strides, Darren. Sure They've got does. Him listed at 6'1", 180. But, boy, he looks a lot bigger than that. Yeah, did a nice job reading the defensive end. And defensive end bit, and he popped the ball outside. Carson Smith run him out after a gain of about five. So here's Rucker in the gun. He's got Gravely off to his right shoulder. He's got trips to the right. Rucker's going to throw to the right side. He's got his man out there, a little short screen to number one. He'll go across the first down marker, and that was Jermaine Foster, the six foot, 190 pound senior. That's going to bring up a Leland Smith Insurance first down. Looks like Baron McCracken on the stop. First and 10 from the 40 yard line, 7.15 to go. Danny Holbrook, Darren Gilbert from Frost Kalnall Stadium here in Tiffin. Regional Championship, the Van Wert Cougars and the Cleveland Glenville Tar Blooders playing for a chance at the state Final Four. Here's Rucker. He's going to hand the ball. Oh, the ball's on the floor. On the and the ball flips out of the intended target. Number 15, he tries to hand the ball to, and that's Gravely. And Gravely and, and Rucker just didn't make a connection there and almost a disaster for the Tar Blooders. Tell you oh, what. Mr. Jones about got that football, didn't he? <laughs> I was going to say, Mr. Jones was right on top of that. Number 55, Jackson Jones. He called his name quite a few times tonight. Yep, that's one of those where you're either going to pull it back out or give it to the running back. And that was a 50-50 right there, and the ball went on the turf. Yeah, Deshante Jones is in the backfield. Here's Rucker. He throws across the middle of the field. He's got his man out there in a beautiful strike. Number 18, Sean Williams, the intended target. And Sean Williams is going to get up and get another Leland Smith first down. That is a beautiful throw there by Deontay Rucker. Sure he was. shows you how strong his arm is. Sure was. Found the opening in the seam in there. And nice delivery and catch and extra two or three yards after the so here comes Rucker. Catch. He's going to hand the ball off. Goes off the left side. This is number seven as he is just rolling through that defense to Shante Jones. And boy, when he gets ahead of steam, Darren, he's tough to bring down. Deontay Jones brings up another Leland Smith first down, and that's going to move the ball into our Young's Waste red zone. Ran himself right out of his shoe, didn't he? Yes, he did. Yeah, he don't mess around. When he gets his hands on the football, he gets them shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage, and he will not run around you. He'll run through you. Shante Jones is back behind Deontay Rucker in the backfield. He's got trip receivers to his right. He's got a single receiver to the left. This is going to be Jones. And Rucker's going to keep it himself. And he's going to be taken oh, down. Big play by Mr. First. Big time play. Big time play in the backfield. As he sacks Deontay Rucker for a big Jacob loss. First. Jacob First shot out on like a cannon as he comes through the defensive line. And he just makes a great tackle behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to bring up second and 15. Big solo tackle there by that young man. So this is Deontay Rucker. He's got Jones in the backfield with him. Rucker's going to throw to the right side. He's got his man out there. It's a completion. And they're going to try to get back to the original line of scrimmage. That's Jermaine Foster, who he had hit earlier in this drive. And that's going to take the ball to about the 20-yard line, bring up a huge third down and 15. Yeah, and that's all good for Van Wert. Keep the football in front of them, put them in a third and long situation. That's all you could ask for. 
Good job there by McCracken. And that was, uh, excuse me, that was second First. 15. Now that brings up third and eight in a seven yard game. Yeah, you so. got to think it's a two down territory Absolutely. if you're the Tar Blooders. Here comes Rucker. He's got Jones off to his left. He's got trip receivers to the left. Rucker's going to roll off to his left side. He's looking downfield. He throws in the end zone, and he's intercepted. Oh, intercepted off. in the end zone. Number two for Mr. the Cougars. Smith. Number two, Carson Smith makes a huge interception, and he thwarts the Glenville drive. A huge play for the Cougars. Unbelievable. He stayed right there. He stayed with his man. He just plays center field and just goes up and makes a great catch, and he saw it coming the whole way. Well, and he did a great job getting down, too. You know, he didn't try to take the ball out of the end zone. Smart, heady play by that young man. And, and honestly, not, yeah, look, if Sean Williams, the intended receiver, he just stood back there. you got to play defensive back when you know that ball's short. And Sean Williams just stood there and watched the play. Well, as a quarterback, you got to do one of two things. You either got to get it to the receiver, you got to throw it out of the back of the end zone. And that ball, like you said, was underthrown. And Mr. Smith was right there waiting on it. So here we go. The Cougars have the ball with 4.31 to go from the 20-yard line. Aiden Pratt's in the gun. He's got Braylon Parker off to his right. He's got trip receivers to the left. He's got a single receiver to the right. 4.31 to go. Pratt's going to keep the ball himself. He's going to go up the middle. And not much of a gain, maybe a yard, a yard and a half. That'll bring up second and about eight at the 22-yard line. You know, the nice luxury right here for Van Wert. They're on the scoreboard. They're leading by nine with four minutes to go. If they could just take and get a sustained drive, not necessarily get points, but just take some time off the clock. Exactly, exactly. And keep the ball out of Glenville's hands. And flip the field. That's right. a win-win situation yeah. for the Cougars. Here's Pratt. He's in an empty backfield as we've got receivers to the left, three of them receivers to the right. Pratt's looking across the field. He's being flushed out of the pocket. He throws down the field, and he does not make a connection. The intended target was number seven, Braylon Parker. He just kind of threw that one away, and I think that's a good play well, on his if part. You take, if we can get a replay here, you're going to understand why he threw that thing away. <laughs> Right. He was under heavy. He was under some heavy oh, pressure. Oh my goodness! Yeah, guess who it was? <laughs> Number eight, Everett yeah, Reese. Mr. Buckeye, Mr. That's Future right. Buckeye. I mean, he was bearing down on him quick. So here's Pratt in the gun. He's got Parker off to his left side. He's got trip receivers to the left. Pratt's going to roll off to his left. He throws off to the left. That little sidearm motion. He's got his man out there. That's Phillips. Number six, and that's Phillips, and a nice connection. Give him and a couple good. more yards on that sideline. He just spun out of that. And that's going to bring up a big fourth down, Darren from about the 25, 26 yard line and Van Wert's gonna have to punt the ball away. They took some time off the clock with the interception. You would have liked to see them move it more, but they did take some time. Yeah, off hopefully the clock. it's enough, you know, to, sure. to keep Glenville out of the end zone. Timeout wise, I'm trying to see. I think Glenville has what, two timeouts left? Yes, is that do. right? And number 18, Sean Williams is back deep. And anytime Sean Williams comes close to a football, you better be careful because he is a dangerous so return of, man. Oh, that's a good bounce yeah. for Van Wert. They're going to keep it away from Williams as they'll down it. In these conditions, that's, that's solid. Absolutely. So Glenville will take over. They will take over at the 41-yard line with 3.40 to go. Danny, we're Darren Gilbert from Frost Cowanow Stadium on a frosty, frigid, cold night. Round four of the state playoffs. A lot of area teams, Darren, in Northwest Ohio vying for a chance to get to the final four. I know that uh, we talked on the way up here about some great games tonight. Allen East and, and Marion Local and uh, New Columbus Bremen. Grove and New Bremen and just a, a plethora of all of our, our favorite teams that we watch each and every week here on WSN. So here comes the Tar Blooders, 3.40 to go. They're down 21 to 12 to the Van Wert Cougars. It just yeah. seems like Glenville is a step off right now. It does, you're absolutely right. Rucker's gonna roll to his right. He's got his man out there and they've got a connection. This is number 19 as he tries to get outside of the sticks. And the completion is made to number 19, Damari and Witten, the 6'3", 200 pound tight end. D1, D1 recruit. He is a D1 recruit and we talked about that on my radio show today. Spencer Holbert from Letterman Rose says that he is a D1 recruit at the tight end position. You Look at him why. run on Absolutely. this replay. Ashton Bear had a difficult time bringing him down but he got him down. You remember that Spencer Holbert was talking about what a fluid runner he is and you just saw it right there folks as he gets outside of the lines. So here's Deontay Rucker and the Tar Blooders. Rucker keeps it himself. He's going to hand the ball off to the first man through. And he's going to be getting nothing through that Van Wert defensive line. Number six, Javon Goodson, 5'10", 215 pound back. Those are big backs they have there, 200, 215, 210, and they're all strong. Going behind the line that is 
huge for Division yeah. Four. Well, I, I can promise you this. Van Wert hasn't played a line this big all year long. No, the closest I yeah. would say would probably be last West week. West Holmes, exactly, exactly. And we, and we commented on the air last week about West Holmes' athleticism and their size. But I think Van Wert's quickness I think you're right. and their ability to, to get through the line of scrimmages. So second and eight from the 42. This is Deontay Rucker in the gun. He's going to hand the ball up to the first man, 18, Sean Williams, as he goes through the line, gets a few blocks, and he tries to get himself. He's going to get a Leland Smith first down, so a great job by number 18, Slippery Sean ending. Williams. And he's fast, and he's not afraid to take a hit. And they bring him up from that slot position. Nice they put job him, by their offensive yeah. line right there, opening up some holes, and he found his way down there, Smith, with the tackle. And Sorry, he, I didn't mean no, to interrupt No, 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 you. you're fine. Sean Williams is not a big kid. He's 5'7", 135, but when they play him in that slot position, Darren, he comes across the backside of the offensive line. So there's a high snap and almost got away with Somebody him. got him by the ankles, yes, Mr. First. Mr. First comes through. He's the first one through, and he makes a great. No pun intended, right? That's right. Ankle ankle tackle there. You watch this, and he just dives through that line. Well, nobody, this. nobody got a piece of him. I mean, he, he had a clear shot. And nope, the, the right tackle decided to pinch down, and he had an open lane right there and made the play. Nice play by that young man, second and nine. So Deontay Rucker's in the gun. He's got Deshaun Jones on the back side on his right shoulder. He's going to hand the ball to Jones. No, he's going to keep it himself. He's going to roll off to the left side. He's got a man out there, and they've got a connection. They'll be taken out of bounds. I the think he's short. Well, he, he, yeah, he he's might be about a yard number short. Number 18, Sean, Jones, or Sean Williams, as they have tried to get him in space all night tonight. And when they do, it's usually bad news for the Cougars. But you're right. I think he is short of the first down. Good they job by Smith right there, pushing him out of bounds, keeping him. Ooh, somebody took a hard hit the there. Lineman, Hopefully they're okay. Yeah, the lineman has him at third and two. They've got the marker down there. So a big third down play here for the Tar Blooders. You got to believe that you got to go with your big horse in the backfield and just go behind that big offensive line. That is Deshaun Jones, and this is Jones. He comes through the line, he busts through the line, and he's going to have a tar blooder touchdown. So Deshaun Jones just burst through the line. He gets another Kitchens Incorporated touchdown, and that brings the lead back to 21 18 in favor of Amber. My goodness, the offensive line just opened up huge holes there. It's almost Darren like this young man, number seven, Deshante Jones. Runs hard two or three plays, and then we'll take a play off. And when he runs hard, you just, he's really a load to bring down. Okay, well, what happens if he starts playing with an attitude? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we've you know just Coach seen Ginn, it on the last yeah, two. You know Coach Ginn's going to really implore, implore him to do that mm. at halftime. But we just got real close. Yeah, it'll be an interesting conversation at halftime, you know, Absolutely. with both coaches. So here comes Glenville. Looks like they're going to go for two, Darren, as they've got Deontay Rucker in under center. They've got number seven back there, Deshante Jones. Let's see what Rucker does. Is he's going to hand the ball to Jones. Jones is going to go to the left side, and he's going to get to the goal line. Does he get in? He does get in, but he is down on the turf. Yeah, slow he getting is up, isn't slow he? Slow getting up. Yeah, he took a shot. But uh, Glenville gets the two-point conversion to bring it to within 21-20. Actually, that was number 18. It appeared to get up. I think you're right, Sean Williams. Oh, oh he yeah. took a shot from his teammates. From his teammates, yeah, you're right. All right, so with 1.24 to go, the Van Wert Cougars hold a 21-20 lead. You're watching high school football right here on WOSN. The premier sponsor for the Van Wert Cougars is Cary Insurance in Grover Hill. Get a quote and see how much you can save at Cary Insurance, our premier sponsor. So let's see what the Cougars can do. If they can respond, they've responded all night, Darren. And now they uh, only hold a slim 21-20 lead over the Glenville Tar Blooders. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, this this final 124 with what Coach Rucker is going to do. you got to sure. believe he's going to keep it on the ground. You know, but you don't want to give them an opportunity Absolutely. to Glenville to, to, Both, get, yeah. to get a shot at the end zone. So. Both teams have two timeouts. Let's see if Glenville uses those timeouts and try to stop the Van Wert attack. They're going to catch the ball at the 10 yard line. This is Phillips as he goes across. Oh, he is upended. He was knocked down hard by number three, Braylon West. My goodness, Braylon West come out of nowhere, hits him at the ankles and flips him. Big tackle there by that young man. You see the uh, Lee Kinzel instant replay here. And watch this as he goes right to his ankles and just flips him head over heels. And uh, <laughs> Mr. Phillips is going to feel that in the morning. I can promise you that. Let's see what the Cougars can do here. Here's another look at it. From he the definitely upended him, oh, didn't he? Oh, my goodness. So 
Here comes Aiden Pratt. He's got Braylon Parker off to his right side. He's got trip receivers to the left and a single receiver to the right. 110 to go here. This is Parker as he goes off the left side. He gets a gain of about two yards. And that'll bring up second and about nine. They're gonna say it was a yard gain. And Glenville's not taking the time out here with a minute. We are now under a minute to go. And I'm kind of surprised with them having them backed up this far that they're not using those timeouts to at least, if you can force a, a three and out, you have to force them to punt. Well, let's see what he does after this play here. He may he may burn one, see what Van Ward does offensively. So that clock continues to run. And Pratt's going to let that play clock go down. We're under 10 seconds. Now you're seeing his senior leadership mm -hmm. as he's going to take it all the way down. Great job by that young man. They snapped the ball with two seconds to go, and Pratt's going to keep it himself. He gets a gain of about two yards. And let's see what Glenville does. A little Pipkin on the stop. They are not going to take a timeout here, and I think Van Wert's just happy. Just They're going to go to the uh, halftime locker room with the lead. And that is exactly what's going to happen with five seconds to go. And that will do it for the first half here at Frost County Stadium. The Van Wert Cougars lead the Cleveland Landville Tarblooders 21-20. You're watching high school sports on WOSN. Welcome back to Frost County Stadium for the second half of tonight's Division IV Regional Championship. The Van Wert Cougars lead, lead excuse me, the Cleveland Glenville Carbos 21 to 20. And Darren, we saw the first half, and Van Wert just capitalized on turnovers, ran the ball effectively, mixed up the run pass option, just played a great first half. If, you, if, you, if you're one of the coaches in Van Wert, you've got to be pleased. You know, walking into the, the halftime up 21 to 20 when a lot of people didn't give give them a right, chance right. or an opportunity. And now they're kicking the, the football off here to start the third quarter. You know, it's going to be big for the defense to come up with a solid possession here and try to keep, keep Glenville, you know, out of the end zone and getting the, the ball back and try to get the points, them points themselves to extend this 21 to 20 lead. Glenville's got number 18, Sean Williams back deep, the speedster who we've talked about all game long. We've done a terrific job of breaking open tackles in the open field. So let's see what Van Wert can do on defense first as they'll try to keep it away from yeah. Mr. Williams. Did you see the adjustment Glenn made? I saw Bill that, I they saw that yeah. Sure hands up front, they no put, more onside put, kicks. A lot of athletes up front. Here's the first half kick as it's a low line driver as it gets away oh, from Sean big. Williams and he's gonna have to field it at about the five yard line. Here comes Van Wert trying to stop the Little speedster as he tries to go up the middle, and a great job by the Cougars. Sure is. Good job containing that young man, keeping him inside to where all the defenders were. Sean Williams, 5'7, 135 pound junior, but he is electric there. He's, he has played, the he's ball. played big this first he half. He has, he one. absolutely has. It's good to see him come back because he was dinged up there right there towards the end of the first and half. Let's see what the Tar Blooders do, Darren. In the first half, they ran a Wildcat package to start their first three possessions out, but it looks like they're bringing. Uh, Quarterback Deontay Rucker out to start the game here. And they've got Deontay Rucker in the backfield along with number seven, Deshante Jones. Here, this is Jones as he goes up the middle. And a great job by the Cougars sure as they, was. they hold stacked him to the a, line yeah. of scrimmage. Great job. Crutchfeld in there. First in there. Nice job by the interior as well as the linebackers. Quick this. replay here. Oh, yeah. McCracken. Saw, I was going to say McCracken got through the stepped defensive in the line. Hole, didn't he? he took away the hole that was open mm -hmm. for the running back, and he takes away the game there. So a great job by McCracken, the linebacker from Van Wert. Steeman coming up from the safety position to make a hit. So this is Rucker as he takes the snap. He's going to look across the field. He throws to the left side. He's got an open man out there. This is number seven for the Qatar Butters, Deshante Jones. And he's going to pick up another Leland Smith first down. He moves the chains, and here come the Tar Blooders on their first offensive possession of the second half. Yeah, on this replay, a little swing pass. Somebody had a shot at him, trying to see who that is. That appeared to be Steeman. Broke away a couple tackles, brought down by Mr. Bear. Number 13, what a great tackle in the open field. So here's Rucker in the gun. He's got Deshante Jones off to his left shoulder. Takes the snap. He's going to hand the ball to Jones. Here comes Jones off the left side, and he just barrels oh, over the Van Wert defense. He's going down the sidelines. You are kidding me. What a run, Deshante Jones. He's going to give the Tar Blooders the 
big time lead here to start the third quarter. Darren, he just absolutely barreled over, and I got to get a number here for Van Wert. Let's take a look here I on the Instagram play. Yeah, I think it was number 13 for the Cougars. You're right. He just went Ashton Bear right over top of him. And I, yeah, you're right. He tried to go low, and Deshante Jones had no business with that. And you said it, Darren. What was the attitude of the Tar mm. coming out of the halftime tunnel? Yeah, that kid, when he plays with an attitude, he's tough to bring down. That is a Kitchens Incorporated touchdown. Touchdowns are presented by Kitchens Incorporated and Van Ort. Kitchens Incorporated has GE appliances and specializes in all your kitchen and bathroom remodeling needs. Stop in or call Shade today for a free estimate. So, wow, that's attitude right there to start the second half. The Glenville Tar Blooders on a huge drive and a big-time run by Deshante Jones as he barrels over the Van Wert defense, and he gives the Tar Blooders the 26-21 lead. Yeah, first half numbers, they were 24 attempts, 153 yards for six and a half yards of carry. We take a look Not at our, too shabby. No, you're right. Our radar here, and it looks like we've got, we said we were going to have no snow, but it looks like, yeah, we've got a band that's moved through here. So my weather forecasting skills, Darren, not not too good. And uh, looks like we're going to get some more snow here before it's all said and done. And uh, for our viewers at home, if you look at the field, they went out at halftime and they took a blower and they've cleared off the lines. And so at least we can see the yard markers and we, we know where the yards. ball is every five yards. We had a little trouble in the first half and we had to keep watching the board and they were guessing themselves too. So good job by the grounds crew here at Frost Connell Stadium. So uh, it took a little while here to get this extra point attempt or the two-point attempt, whichever they choose to do here. Not real sure if it was an injury timeout or what they were doing. Uh, but the officials have moved the ball up. And they're starting from the eight-yard line. So I'm not real I sure. If there was a penalty there. I after, didn't see it. I did not play. see the penalty. But this is Rucker as he's in the gun. He takes the direct snap. Looks across, he throws to the end zone. He's got his man out there, and he's got a connection, number 19. And that's Demarion Witten, the big tight end. And he just hauls it in, and he gives Glenville the 28-21 lead. Got his big mitts on that one, didn't he? He sure did. And you want to talk about a strike. Deontay Rucker just throws a laser beam to Demarion Witten, and he just finds him in the back of the end zone. And a fantastic catch by that young man. So with 10.46 to go here in the third quarter, the Glenville Tar Blooders take the 28-21 lead here on WOSN. The premier sponsor for the Van Wert Cougars is Cary Insurance in Grover Hill. Get a quote and see how much you can save. Cary Insurance is our premier sponsor for the Van Wert Cougars. So 28-21, Darren, with 10.46 to go. And if you're the Tar Blooders, that's exactly what you wanted to do to start the second half is flex your muscle a little bit and get the momentum back on your side. Uh, Halftime speech must have worked, huh? Yes, sir. And they get a little blooper kick that goes out of bounds in a – Smart be play Van, there yeah. by Van Wert. Absolutely. Van Wert just lets it go out of bounds, so they'll take it to 35. So that's a great field position here. And they'll try to respond to that big drive by the Tar Blooders. You take a look at the first half, and Glenville really a couple big costly turnovers that really hurt them on the offensive side of the ball. Well, the fumble, you know, inside their 40-yard line, and then they're trying to punch the ball in, and Carson Smith makes a great play. Ball was underthrown, and he intercepted it and in the end zone. And uh, they shot themselves in the foot a couple times, but they've appeared to bounce back and take the lead here early in the third quarter with just under 11 minutes to go. Van Wert's going to get an opportunity to see what they can do with the football. So here comes Pratt. He's in the gun. He's got Parker off to his right side. He's got trips to the left. He's going to hand the ball to Parker, and he is going to be taken down immediately for a two-yard loss. Number 20, it looks like, for the Tar Blooders, comes out of his defensive Keaton back position. Murray. Keaton Murray and does a great job of taking Braylon Parker down behind. Almost met him at the ball. Fantastic job by number 20, Keaton Murray, the 6'2", 190-pound defensive back. Here's Pratt as he throws down the right side. He's got a man in the middle, and he just overshoots him. Intended target was number three, Connor Campbell, and he had him open. He just Same route that he scored a touchdown in the first half, and he had him there again. So now the problem here on the first down play, you take a two-yard loss, you have an incomplete pass. Now you're third and long, third and 12 from the 33. They've got to pick up some big-time yardage here, Darren. Well, let's see what, you know, Glenville decides to do. Do they come with pressure and just man up on the wide receivers, or are they going to go to a little bit of zone? Let's see what it looks like they're just going to man up. 
take their chance. Here's Pratt, he's in an empty backfield. He's got trips to the right. He looks across the field. He's under pressure. He throws deep down the right side, and there's nobody out there. And it looked like the receiver stopped the route. Number 11 for the Cougars was the intended target, Maddox Crutchfield, but he just stopped the route, so there was a disconnect between him and Aiden Pratt there. Yeah, there could have been a little miscommunication there, but there was also pressure burned down on uh, Pratt for him to unload the football to keep from taking the sack. For the most part, that possession, the, the, the pass protection was really, it really was. good for yeah. the Cougars. So the Cougars are going to punt the ball away, and Linville will get it back for a second possession of the second half. They lead 28-21. Here's the punt. It is a low line driver that gets over the head of number 18, Sean Williams. Is he going to go to the left side as he tries to get to the sidelines? And that's where he'll be taken out of bounds at about the 32-yard line. Nice solo tackle there by Mr. Gunter. So Sean Williams is everywhere on the ball or on the on the field. He's for been the Linville. difference. Uh, special teams wise, but ob yes. obviously number seven has been the horse for them running the football. So a cold, crisp night from Frost Connell Stadium here in Tiffin. And the Van Wert Cougars are down 28-21. They led all of the first half. And Glenville comes out quick and strikes first. Here's Rucker in the gun, high snap. The ball's on the floor, oh, and Van, Van Wert recovers. Guy. Van Wert gets the fumble. That's the third turnover tonight by the Tar Blooders, and that is absolutely what the Van Wert Cougars needed. So another exchange problem between the quarterback and the tailback for the Tar Blooders. Trying to see who's on the field. It appears that – is it McCracken? Oh, that is McCracken. Appears to be holding his shoulder. Yes, and that would be a huge loss for the Cougars. Let's see what happens here, if we can see where McCracken gets hurt. I think, I think hurt. first was on the play. And, and number 75. The big, the big fella, yeah, Smith. Braylon Smith, 6'2", 275 pounds, just fell on his shoulder. Absolutely an accidental play there, but he comes down hard on McCracken's shoulder, and let's hope – Let's hope he's okay. They're going to tend to Mr. McCracken on the field. We'll take a break here in the booth. You're watching High School Football on WSN. Extra points are sponsored tonight by Lee Kinsel on Urban Road in Van Wert. Take a look at our pre-owned specials at LeeKinsel.com. So Damon McCracken, the All-State linebacker, is being helped off the field. He is going off on his own power, which is a good sign, Darren. But it looked like he was either holding his shoulder or maybe a rib. So yeah, he we'll got in see. between the big fella. <laughs> And the ground right there, and unfortunately the big fella landed on top of him, and uh, hopefully he's okay when getting back into the football game. Here's Aiden Pratt as he fakes the pitch out to Parker. He'll keep it himself and get a gain of maybe a yard, a yard and a half. That'll bring up second and nine from the 26-yard line. 9.48 to go. Danny Holbrook, Darren Gilbert from Frost Connell Stadium in Tiffin. Van Wert Cougars trying to win a regional championship. Here for the third year in a row, Darren. We talked to Coach Recker, and he's pretty excited about that accomplishment. Yes, it sure is. It's a great accomplishment for him. Here's Pratt. He's in an empty backfield. He's got two receivers to his right, and he's got trips to the left. Pratt goes up to the line. Reeves appears to be a little bit more active here in the second half for Glenville. He was on the stop the last play. Here's Pratt as he throws to the left side, and wow, what a play by number four for the Tar Blooders, and that is Jalen Carter, the 5'7", 140-pound defensive back. He just comes up. Shot him out of a cannon. Really, oh my really goodness gracious. takes a big-time hit on number 11, it was Max actually Crutchfield. Number, it was actually number three, West. Number three, West, yeah. Like you said, number four was in there to clean it up. Maddox Crutchfield really take the brunt of that hit. That'll bring up third and ten for the 27. Let's see what the Cougars can do. You gotta believe this is gonna be a, even though it's third and ten, you gotta believe that they're gonna go for it regardless. I would think this far down. You're right. Where the well, where the placement of the football is. Here's Aiden Pratt. Looks across the field. He's gonna roll to his right under heavy pressure. He throws to the end zone. He's got a man out there. Touchdown! Oh, great catch. Number seven, Mr. Braylon Parker. Parker makes the touchdown catch, and he inches the Cougars closer at 28-27. A fantastic throw by Aiden Pratt as he finds Braylon Parker in the right side of the end zone. You know, if you're a defensive back coach for the Tar Blooders, you've got to be scratching your head asking, why is my defensive backs letting the receivers of Van Wert behind well, us? You can't let the receiver get that far in the no. end zone. I mean, it's one thing to And it to wasn't have, yeah. one. There was two, two defensive of them back backs. There. So that'll bring up. That's right. 
Uh, Damon McCracken back in the game to kick, which is a great sign it for sure the is. Cougars. So let's see if he can't tack on the Lee Kinzel extra point. And they're going to stop play here, and let's see what they call. There is a stoppage of play here. All jokes aside, are they going to bring out a broom? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. <laughs> I don't know what they stopped play there for. Everybody here in the booth kind of is in the same position we are. Well, Why did they stop play? running people, running people in, running people out. So, not quite sure. So here's McCracken as he tries the extra point. The snap is back. Hold is good, and the kick is low, and it is no good. So, and I'm not going to say that was blocked because it didn't get off the ground very well. But at the 8:27 mark, the Glenville Tar Blooders continue to lead 28 to 27. You're watching high school sports right here on WOSN. Tonight's touchdowns are presented by Kitchen Zinc and Van Work. Kitchen Zinc has GE appliances and specializes in all your kitchen and bathroom and modeling needs. Stop in and call Shea today for a free estimate. So the Van Work Cougars on a great pass and catch from Aiden Pratt. Mr. Parker out of the backfield, and he does a great job. Raylan Parker catches in the right corner of the end zone. Another great opportunity there for him to cash in on another Glenville turnover. So Glenville has Sean Williams deep, and that's the Cougars. They do not want to uh, kick the ball to that young man. They'll try to keep it away from him, and that's exactly what they don't do. He gets the ball right at about the 15-yard line. He squirts through that defense, and he'll be taken down somewhere around the 40-yard line. Well, he's still going, and I thought they were going to call the play dead, and he takes it all the way to the 50-yard line. Not quite sure why it wasn't blown I, dead. Yeah, I don't understand that. Uh, after about five seconds of just a standstill, you'd have thought, and look at their instant replay, you'd have thought that it would have been called dead, but they did not here. And right here is where I thought it was called dead. He was going backwards, and that, that should have been called dead. I'm just going to be honest with you. That should have been called dead. But what do I know? trying to see what they're doing there. Was there a penalty on the field? It is against Glenville. You're right, there is a penalty on the field. I didn't quite field. see what the indication was, but it's a big one. It is a big one. That's got to be the personal foul kind. Let's see what they say here. I think we missed it. Anyway, the ball goes back to the 25-yard line. That's where Glenville will take over. Here's Deontay Rucker in the backfield. He's going to hand the ball off the right side. This is number seven, Deshante Jones, as he goes off the right side for a gain of about three to four yards. It'll be second, and let's call it six from the 29. And they're calling it second and five in the booth from the 20, or from, excuse me, from the 30. Cage steaming on the stop. Seven forty-eight to go. Glenville leads 28-21. Deontay Rucker is in the gun. He's got number seven, Deshaun Jones, off to his left shoulder. He's going to hand the ball to Jones since he's met right at the line of scrimmage. He continues to churn out yards. And he is going to be close to another Leland Smith first down, and that is exactly what they call it, and the chains will move. Boy, when he gets ahead of steam up there, mm. he is a load to bring down. Yeah, you get the shoulder square to the line of scrimmage, he's going to find his way. And if he doesn't have a lane, he's going to just try to run over the top of you. If you're if your Van Ward is right here is where you gotta you gotta hold your ground here. You can't let him get up another possession. You're down one right now. Or break off a big exactly, play. Exactly. Exactly. Jones on the stop for the Cougars' last possession there. There's Rutgers. He hands the ball to Jones again. He goes off the left side. He picks up about four to five yards, and he is just getting four to five yards each carry, and that is a problem right now. And you got to believe that Van Wert's going to have to bring those defensive backs up just a little bit to fortify that defensive line. Looks like McCracken on the stop. Got to bring up second and five from the 40. Aaron Reichert also in, assisting. Glenville in no hurry to run the play here with 6.43 to go. Yeah, I'm like you. You can't put him in second and five second and six situations. Yeah. You've got to get him in third and long. This is a big play here if they can put him in third and long situation. Here's Rucker, he takes the snap, he hands the ball to Jones, he goes right up the middle, and he just barrels over more people, and he's gonna be about two yards short of first down, maybe a yard short. It's gonna bring up a big third down. Oh no, they're saying he got the first down. Yeah, he met he Logan him. Dotson right there, and Dotson just couldn't bring him down. Well, it wasn't Dotson, it looked like it was 
Uh, was Dotson and Steeman, excuse me. He is such a physical back. And he picks up another Leland Smith first down. Leland Smith Insurance Service is your first call for all your insurance needs. Ashton Barrett. Okay. We're moving the change back. Okay, I thought I, would, I thought I saw that he did not pick up the first down. I was kind of taken aback when they moved it to the first down marker. Uh, but uh, I was watching the I was watching the chain gang okay. like the rest of us here in the booth. Ashton Bear coming up from the secondary to make the tackle. So that's going to bring third and one, and I got to believe they're mm, going to stick. Where with are they going to go with it? <laughs> I got to believe they're going to stick with Deshante Jones on this. Let's see what they do. Oh, they're going to measure now. So maybe I was wrong. Let's see. Let's see what they call here. And they moved it, but here's the thing, they moved the chains back already, Darren. How do you do that? Good I don't, question. I don't, I don't understand that. I've never seen that, where they move the chains back and then they come out and measure again. And it's gonna come up short. And it's about uh, <laughs> a few inches short, so uh, let's about see two if lengths of a football, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I gotta believe, yeah, maybe less than that. And uh, you, you, you wonder if they don't put Deontay Rucker right under center, if they'll just sneak it Wild in. Wildcat setting. Well, you look at Deontay Rucker, he is 6'1", 180 pounds. So he's a big quarterback that can just fall forward here. And let's see if he can't pick up the first down. And they're right behind this huge offensive line with number 66, Phillip Sainz, the 6'1", 295 pound Here's center. Here's be number six in the backfield. Yeah, this is number six, Javon Goodson. He's he put it on the Turf the last time with a yes, miscommunication. So here's Rucker. He's going to hand the ball to Goodson. Goodson's going to easily pick up the first down. He goes off the left side. You know, he pushed out of bounds, but he'll get another Leland Smith first down. So they continue to move the chains. As the clock continues to move, they continue to lead 28-27. Steeman Smith and Parker on the play. And they are finding success out there on the boundaries. On the edge, yeah. Yeah, they are. And, and, they are really dominating out there in the open field. Well, they're setting up the play in between the guards also. You know, they're, they've had such success running the football down the middle of the There's line of scrimmage. Up and out pass out to Sean Williams, and he'll pick up another Leland Smith first down. It's a three-yard reception, but it's a seven to eight-yard run. And any time you get the ball out to Sean Williams, he's a threat to go all the way. And here you see just a nice pitch and catch. And, they're just moving the chains again. What'd you tell me, all of 145? Yes, yeah. Sean Williams, number 18, 5'7", 135 pounds. So here comes number 19, or excuse me, number 16, Deontay Rucker. He's got Javon Goodson in the backfield with him. He's got two receivers to his left and a single receiver to the right. He's got a flanker off to his right side. He's going to look across the field. He's going to throw down the left side. He's got a man out there, and almost a connection. His intended target was to number five for the Tar Blooders, Malik Heron. That's his first target tonight. We haven't mentioned his name tonight. Malik Heron is the six foot, 175 pound senior out there. Appeared to be Carson Smith on the coverage. So now we're third and one again, and that's a great time to go, a second one, go downfield like they did. So I really like that uh, by the Glenville. Yeah, it was offense. a one-on-one -on -one situation out here near us. So Javon Goodson is the back behind Deontay Rucker. Let's see if Goodson gets the carry here, and that's exactly what he puts oh, him on he the put field. It on the floor. And it's recovered by Van Wert. The it's Cougars steaming. get the fourth turnover of the night by the Tar Blooders. And that, you said it earlier, Darren, Javon Goodson has had trouble with that exchange all night. We take a look at the play. He puts it right in his belly, and Goodson just coughs the ball up. Well, he put it a little high, Darren. He hands the ball to him at the chest area, and that's not that's a no-no. And the Cougars recover at the 40-yard line. Gage Steeman coming up from the safety spot to recover that football. So this, That's number four, right? Turnover? Yes, the fourth turnover Glenville. by the Tar Blooders. One in the air and three on the ground. Yeah, hot potato anytime you get her down there on that wet, snowy turf. Recovered by number five, Gage yes. Steeman. Yep, Steeman so coming here's up. Pratt. He's got an empty backfield. He's got trips to the left. He's got two receivers to the right. He is in the gun. He's got a man, and this is Critchfield in motion. He's going to look across the field. He's under heavy pressure. He's rolling, throwing it deep down the right side. He's got He's a man got out him. there. He's got Phillips out to the 20, and a great connection to number six, Nate Phillips, who beats his man again to the right side of the field. And right here, it all created, Darren, by 
Pratt's ability to get away from Reese and the rush by the Tar Blooders, and he throws an absolute strike to Nate Phillips. Well, he's putting it there where the defender can't get an interception. The best he could do would be defend it, but, you know, perfect pass there, great catch by Phillips. And there's Pratt, and a flag late comes flag in coming from in. way across the field. Face and mask you, yeah, or a late hit, possibly. I, I was going to say, Darren, that sounds to me like an either a face mask or a late hit on Aiden Pratt. Let's see what they call. But the official come from the left side of the field, and he comes running in and throws the flag. Yeah, the reaction from the secondary by Glenville makes you wonder if it's not against the Tar Blooders. Let's, let's take a closer look and let's see if it's a... Yeah, here's Pratt. And I can't see anything. Well, number three for the Cougars, uh, Connor Campbell was looking at the official and he had his hands up like, are you going to make a call? So let's see what the officials decide to call here. And maybe they call a late hit or maybe they take the flag away. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see just what comes out of this play here. The decision the official's going to make. Is anybody going to make the call here? Let's see here. Their personal foul against oh, the Tar Blooders. So you're right, Darren. You called it right. It is a late hit. He must have been down, or they determined he was down, and that's going to move the ball up into our red zone sponsor is Young's Transfer Station. Whatever the job, when you're ready to dump your junk, bring it to Young's. Open to the public Monday through Friday, 8 to 4. Young's Waste is our red zone sponsor. So here comes Pratt. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to follow Parker behind the line. And he's going to get a gain of about three. It'll take it up to about the seven-yard line. Boy, I think Mr. Pratt would like to have that one back because there may have been a sliver of room. Yeah, going I was going to gonna say, yeah. to the, Not a big hole, but no, a sliver you're right. of room for him to die for about three or four more yards. You're right. So here comes Pratt. He's got Parker up to the right side. He's got a receiver in the slot. Pratt's going to keep it himself. He's following the block of Parker. So he tries to go around the right side, and he's going to be taken down. And he's taken down by number eight, the Ohio State commit, Arvell Reese. And there is a flag on the field again, and that's going to go against Van Wert. And that's just from the response from the Tarbos. Block in the back. Let's see what they call here. Yeah, block in the back. A block appears. in the back, and that's going to move the ball back. Yeah, that's a big one. That is a big play. But. It also gives Mr. Pratt a little, a little more, more room, room to work. Yeah, to yeah, work yeah, a little with. more room to work. That's going to take the ball to the 15-yard line. And he's been able to place it on all spots on the field. So let's see what the package they come up with here. So second and goal from the 15. Here's Pratt in an empty backfield. He's got trips to the left. He's got two receivers to the right. Pratt's going to look across the field. He's under pressure. He throws down the middle, and he just overshoots the receivers. Intended target was number 11 for the Cougars, and that's Maddox Crutchfield. Now, as you watch that, you're thinking, why did he throw the ball out of the back of the end zone? Well, could have been pressure there. And number two, he placed that where nobody was going to get him. Absolutely, absolutely. He had to get rid Heady of Heady play. Ball. Yeah, it was. It was a very good play by Aiden Pratt. So 3.49 to go, third and 15 from the 15. Here's Pratt, he's got Parker off to his left side, he's gonna keep it himself, he rolls to the left side, throws out left, and the ball's deflected, and it's picked off. The ball was deflected at the line of scrimmage and picked off by number eight, Arvell Reese, and we talked about him all night, folks. He is an Ohio State commitment. Everybody in the country was after that young man's services, and you see the athleticism there. Yep, I think it was all initiated by the play. Interior lineman Philip Saines getting his hands up, knocking the ball up in the air, and Reeves running underneath it. Tough break for the Cougars. So the Cougars are going to have to barrel down here on defense as they turn the ball over. As uh, they are driving on a tar blooder turnover, so they give the ball right back to Glenville. Down only 28 27 because of a missed PAT. So uh, let's see. The, what block, the block, excuse me, the block in the back didn't help matters no, right it there. You it, know, it, back it, it, you're right, it handicaps your, your offensive sets. So here's number 16 for the Tar Blooders as he comes back in the quarterback position, Deontay Rucker. He's going to give it to Sean Williams on a tr little sweep play there. He's met by a whole lot of Van Wert Cougars there and not much of a gain. Crutch, Crutchfeld, Steeman, McCracken. 
gain of only two yards. That'll bring him second and eight. And that, Darren, right there, maybe the, the least they've got on first down this whole second half. Well, Van Wert did a really good job turning back to where their defenders were, not letting him bounce it outside. If you let him bounce it outside, their speed, oh, absolutely. you know, could be very, very detrimental. So here we are, second and eight from the 30-yard line. Deontay Rucker's in the backfield. He's got McQueen Gravely flanking off to his left side. He's going to give it to Gravely, and Gravely goes through the middle of the uh, defensive line. He's carrying Van Wert Cougars. Almost lost the, the football. He almost did, and that's going to bring up a big third down for the Cougars. Let's see who was in on the stop here. Somebody was trying to strip the football. Going to bring up third and five from Steeman. Third and four from the 30. Yeah, you're right. He almost gave it up there. Dodson first. Host the Cougars. Gravely's Good job, gang, tackling right there. Gravely's going to stay in the backfield beside Rucker. It's third and four from the 35. Gravely, or excuse me, Rucker's in the gun. He takes the snap. He looks down the field. He's under pressure. He steps up in the pocket. He's going to throw down the middle, and he's overshoots his receiver, and you're going to get a pass interference, number seven for the Cougars, Ooh. and that's, <clears throat> excuse me, Braylon Parker as he was interfering with Sean Williams, and he just had his hand on him, trying to hold him a little bit. You're either going to get pass interference or a hold play right there, or a hold call. Well, my question was, was it an uncatchable ball? But then again, you know, with the pass interference, did that prevent him from? Right. I, I don't think it was an uncatchable ball, but I think because of the pass interference, he wasn't going to catch it. So Good job with yeah. pressure there initially from the front four of Van Wert, making who, Rucker step up in the pocket and unload yeah, so it. That, so they had him where they wanted him at third sure and five, did. and they got the pressure on Rucker. He overthrows his receiver, but a pass interference penalty gives Glenville the first and 10 from the 50 yard line. So this is Rucker. He's got Gravely in the backfield. He's going to hand the ball to Gravely and he's going to be taken down by Aiden Pratt Big as he play. gets through the backfield and Aiden Pratt does a great job of taking down Daquan Gravely. Trying to see who he got away from somebody. Oh yeah. Nice play. Got away from the left tackle right there. Shedded the block. Made the play. Big play by that senior. Gutsy. It's going to bring up second and 10 from the 50 as there was no gain on the play. This is Deontay Rucker continues at the quarterback position. He's got number seven, Deshante Jones, in the backfield with him. He's going to get the ball to, no, he's going to fake the ball. He's going to roll to his right. He's under heavy pressure. He throws. He's got his man out there. He's got Witten out there, and he's going to run. And hey, a big time play by number 19, Damarian Witten. And I will tell you, of all the athletes they've got out there, Darren, he's really impressed me tonight. Yeah, not, not quite sure why they're not thrown to him oh more with his goodness. mismatch, with his athleticism and his size and, you know, length. 6'3", 200 pounds, and they've got him listed as a tight end. But at the Division I level in college, he'll be a matchup nightmare. With 25 pounds, 30 pounds of bulk on him, absolutely. So here come the Tar Blooders, first and 10 from the 21. They're going to hand the ball off as he goes right up the middle. <laughs> That's number seven, Deshante Jones, as he continues to barrel over that Cougar defense. And that's a big problem right now as the Tar Blooders looking to score another touchdown here in the third quarter. Well, it's going to be interesting to see if they decide to put number six back in and give him the football or they're going to and Aiden write Pratt, number seven right here. Aiden Pratt is down right now for the Cougars, uh, and he is holding his leg or his ankle, and the training staff is out there, and that would be an absolute huge blow to the Cougars, not only defensively, but he is the starting quarterback. And uh, Coach Reckers called his team over. See, see if we, we can't can, see yeah. on the replay here. See what happens here. Uh, now I can't see really what happens. But he, he was not in the initial, or he was not in the play at the end of the play, so it must have happened uh, at the point of attack on the defensive line. We're going to take a break here and step aside and say 10 to this injured athlete. You're watching high school football on WOSA. Welcome back to Frost County Stadium. We're going to show you the instant replay where Aiden Pratt got hurt. And uh, <laughs> after this play here, we'll show it to you. And here's Glenville as they line up and they hand the ball off to Jones. He goes off to the right side and he's going to take it into the end zone. Deshante Jones gets it. Oh, another. there's a flag. There's, there's a, flag a late flag down. coming out. And let's see what happens here. The flag, and it looks like it's going to be. 
is it a holding call? Yeah, the, the official saying holding on the Glenville offensive line. So a huge break for the Van Wert Cougars. Here's the uh, Aiden Pratt, and if you're squeamish, look away because his ankle gets turned right here. Oh my goodness! Let's hope that young man is okay. Uh, they helped him off the sidelines, but uh, just a devastating injury for the Cougars. Uh, we'll have uh, see if we can't get some more reports here during this game, and we'll see if he even comes back to play offense for the Cougars. So here come the Tar Blooders. They've got number 16, Deontay Rucker, in the gun. He's flanked off the left side by Deshante Jones. He's got two receivers to the left. Rucker takes the snap. He's going to hand the ball to Deshante Jones as he goes off the right side, and he gets through the line and tries to get another first down, and that's exactly what he'll do in Leland Smith Insurance first down. Big run by that young man. Van Wert's trying to get him at the ankles, and he is just so powerful and strong from the waist down that he's just bouncing defenders off of him. That'll make it first and goal from the six yard line. All the momentum right now, Darren, is in favor of the Tar Blooders off of the turnover and it was the tipped ball at the line of scrimmage and they've continued to move the chains here in the third quarter. You know, I'm trying to look across the way just right directly across it. It appears they're taping his right ankle up. He's gonna try to come back in and play. There's Rucker in the gun. He's going to hand the ball to Shante Jones, and he's going to go to the left side, and he's going to roll into the end zone for another Kitchens Incorporated touchdown. So Cleveland Glenville takes the 34-27 lead on the strength of Deshante Jones as he scores another touchdown here in the third quarter. And uh, just the word we got from the sideline right now is Aiden Pratt is standing up. They've got him on the sidelines. They've taped him up. And uh, it appears to me that, yes, he is running. It appears to me that he's going to try to give it a go. So a huge boost of confidence for the Cougars as Aiden Pratt appears to be coming back into the ball game. But they've got a little matter of a, a two-point conversion here with 29 seconds to go down 34-27. So Rucker is in the gun. He has got number seven, Deshante Jones, who just scored the touchdown off to his right side. Let's see if they don't give the ball to Jones again. They've got Witten, the tight end, under center, and he's going to take the direct snap, and he's not going to get in. No, he's he did short. not get in. He's short. And a great job by the Van Wert Cougar defensive line. When Witten went under center, they recognized the play, and they did a great job of stopping him. So number 19, Damarian Witten tries to sneak it in from under center, and the Cougars hold their ground, and they're only down 34-27, and that's big, Darren. That's wow, really big. McCracken just jumping right in there and taking the, the big offensive lineman on, and what a gutsy play there. So with 29 seconds to go, the Cougars down 34-27, and Aiden Pratt is apparently going to try to come back in the game. They taped him up, and that is just huge news for the Cougars. Well, down. my concern is, is, you know, how is the tape, you know, going to affect his play as far as footwork, number one, and number two, that being his push-off leg, you know, throwing yeah, the football. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And also, you know, playing that right defensive end. Um, you know, is he going to be able to go both ways or they're going to have to change their philosophy defensively and just keep him under the, the center? It's going to be interesting to see. I know if it was if it had anything to do with Aiden and his decision, he'd be playing both sides of the ball. Absolutely. Out of town or can't get WSN? WSN is now streaming 24-7 online on Roku and Apple TV. Download our Roku channel and Apple TV app to subscribe. A $100 donation allows you to watch anywhere in the world. Visit app.wosn.tv to sign up now. I love our Christmas graphics, Darren. My Great job. Goodness. Look at that. Gives you in a festive mood. It does. Absolutely. Is that snow coming from outside or on the screen? Because <laughs> we've seen enough You're of it right, tonight. That's right. Uh, ben Rice really good, but mm -hmm. I don't think he can make it snow. No. Uh, <laughs> here's the deep kick to Van Wert as they'll take it at about the 10-yard line. And Phillips mishandles it, and he's going to have to take it down right there. So an unfortunate turn of events as number six for the Cougars, and that is Nate Phillips. Kind of bobbled the ball a little bit, so the Cougars are going to be backed up at the 10-yard line. you got to believe, Darren, that Glenville, knowing Pratt's got a bad ankle, they're going to come after yeah, him. Yeah, they're going to pin their ears back now, and they're going to come after him, or they're going to make him, you know, do something with the football, and whether it be running or planning and trying to throw that thing. But, like, I'm, I'm, I'm inclined to believe what you're going to do, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking they're going to sneak these linebackers up in the athleticism and turn up the defense. 
There Here's, comes there comes Reeves right up the line of scrimmage. Here's Pratt. He's in the empty backfield. He's going to throw off to the left side, and he's got Critchfield out there. And a nice strike to the 15, uh, taken out of bounds to the 17, and kind of thrown down out of bounds. And uh, could have been a late call there, but uh, no 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 penalty on the on the play. But now, now you got to believe that Coach Recker is going to do some quick passes here, and, and really, and I think that's a good play right now for the situation they're in. Well, here goes a quick pass route, and he's going to set somebody up deep. And we've got a Glenville Tarbutter who is hurt. Appears and, to be uh, uh, cramps. Cramps, and uh, listen, I know that's kind of funny. We say cramps on a cold night like this, but you have to stay hydrated even in cold weather like this. Correct. So those kids get a lot of action out there. So, yeah, Aiden Pratt back in there throws a quick strike to the right side. Check and again, it. just like what? Oh, excuse no, me. Good. You know, just like last week, West Holmes has not been tested. Neither is Glenville, and to see what Van Ward is doing to them right now, you know, it's only a one possession game. Absolutely, if they can move the ball down here with 21 seconds to go, you've got the entire fourth quarter. Hang around. And look, anything's possible, and this is the thing legends are made of. If Aiden Pratt, this is his Willis Reed moment. <laughs> this is his chance to be the guy to take that's his That's before Cougars. his time. Well, that's, <laughs> that's right, it's before his time. So here comes Pratt. They're going to keep him in an empty backfield, and they've got six receivers, Darren. Three, excuse me, five receivers, three to the left and two to the right. Here's Pratt. He gets the ball out quick again, and it's Critchfield again. And they're going to say no, that he did not catch it inbounds. That'll be an incompletion. Boy, I thought he got yeah, they're that start, They're starting to bring Reeves on some pressure now. Well, what you're going to see if they bring that linebacker every time, that middle's going to be open. Mm -hmm. And you said it best. You, you can bring those guys all day, but if that leaves an open spot in that zone, you're in real trouble. You put somebody in the slot and get matched up with a linebacker. So here's Pratt again in the empty backfield. You said Ar Arvell Reese from Cleveland Glenville. He is the linebacker, number eight, and he is coming through that line, and he is showing a blitz package right now. Let's see if he does do that. He's coming off the edge, and there he goes, and there's – Pratt, he throws down the sidelines, and it's picked. Oh, it was picked off, and he dropped the ball. Number two for the Tar Blooders, Bryce West. And he looked like he was the intended target as the receiver was Phillips, who got beat bad on that play, and Pratt almost throws the interception there. So do or die time for the Cougs right now, Darren, with 12 seconds to go in the third quarter. They'll have to punt the ball away. This is number five, Gage Steeman, as he gets set up to punt the ball. And Glenville has no one back deep. And a low line driver that's going to bounce at the Van 45. Burt. And it's going to go to the 40. And it's going to keep rolling to about the 37 yard line. So a fantastic job by the punter, Gage Steeman, as he gets the ball. And not was quite a, sure. No, because they made no effort to go for the block, Yeah, did they? I didn't understand that. Did they think there was going to be a fake? I can't imagine in that situation that Van Wert was going to fake to go. It. Yeah, absolutely. So a great – yeah, we're going to take a break here with 12 minutes to go until the end of this game. Van Wert's down 34-27. Leland Smith Insurance Services, our first down sponsor, your first call for all your insurance needs, Leland Smith Insurance. So here come the Tar Blooders. They'll bring it back out again. This is number 15, Gravely. As he goes off the left side, and he picks up a big first down. And he just looks like he was thrown out of a shot, out of a cannon as his speed was on display there. McQuan Gravely. Got nine, didn't he? Yes, he did. My goodness, he just looks so quick there. And now he looks like he is hurt as his teammates are, well, maybe not. He's going to stay in the game here. Here come the Tar Blooders. First, second, and one from the 45. 11.27 to go until the end of this one. Glenville leads 34-27. Here comes Gravely again. When he gets away from the tackle. And yeah, that was Pratt. Aiden Pratt gets through the defensive line, and he had him in the backfield, and Gravely just squirts away from him. That'll be another Leland Smith first down. Yeah, he had him, just couldn't bring him down. Good job slowing him up for his teammates, though, trying to see who come in there for the stop. Appeared to be Gage Steeman. They'll bring up first and 10 from the 49. Van Wert's got to make something happen here as that clock continues to run. 
Rutgers in the gun. He's got Gravely behind him. Gravely's going to take the handoff. He goes up the middle of the line, and he is just stuck there for a gain of about a yard, a yard and a half. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head there. Mr. Dotson met him at the line of scrimmage along with a couple of his teammates. Absolutely no quit in this Van Wert defense. And a great job by that defensive line of stopping number 15, McQuan Gravely. And they just keep running a different back each sequence, Darren. It's amazing the athletes they Did have. Did you notice who they don't have in there right now? Right, right. Or is he in there now? He may be back there. Well, this is Gravely who's behind Rucker. This is Whitten in the slot. Is it, is it Gravely? Yes, okay. Gravely's in the backfield. Here's Rutgers. He's handing the ball to Gravely again. And he's taken down by number 53 from Van Wert. First McCracken. That is Jacob Pratt. first and Damon McCracken, also Aiden Pratt on the tackle. That's going to bring up a big third down and four from the, looks about the 50 yard line, the midfield. 45? Sorry, 45, excuse me. <laughs> the, uh, the numbers that they cleared off are starting to go <laughs> back again where we can't see them. So here we go, third and four from the 45. This is Rucker. He's got Gravely off to his right side. He's got Witten in the slot position. He's got two single sets on the left and the right side. Rucker takes the snap. He's going to throw off to the right side. He's got Sean Williams out there, and he's going to pick up another Leland Smith first down. Got Sean enough, didn't well, he? Well, you just, you just got to play off of him, Darren, because you can't go straight up on him. He's just so quick that if you give him a step, he's going to get around you. Yeah, he come up, he come up a little lame right there on the tackle from – Ashton Bear, so he's on the sidelines right now. 9.13 to go, that clock continues to run. Van Wert down 34-27. Maybe, maybe a turnover, another turnover would be something good for Van Wert, you know? Yeah, big stop right here. There's Rucker in the gun, he's flanked by Deshante Jones off to his right shoulder. That's who's gonna get the ball is Jones as he goes through the middle of the line. And he's hit hard as he spins around taken down by big number 55 for the Cougars. And that's Jackson Jones, the 6'1", 240-pound senior who's had a heck of a game tonight. Steeman also coming up from his free safety spot to lay the wood to Mr. Jones. It's going to bring up second and six from the 35, 8.33 to go. Danny Hilbert, Darren Gilbert from Frost Conall Stadium here in Tiffin, Ohio. The regional championship, the winner goes on to the final four. Next game at Crew Stadium in Columbus, Ohio. Here's Rucker, he's got Gravely off to the right. He's also got number seven, Deshante Jones in the slot position. He's gonna throw the ball and he overshoots oh, his receiver. Boy, oh my that goodness, close. that could have been the play they were looking to. And that was number two in the backfield, Carson Smith. As he, If he'd have been up just a little farther, Darren, he would have made a, a really good attempt at that. Yeah, somebody got their hands up just to take and cause a little confusion for the quarterback. I'm trying to see who that was. Oh yeah, that was number 11, Crutchfield. So here we go, third and six from the 35. Deontay Rucker is in the backfield. He's got number seven off to his left side. That is Deshante Jones. You gotta believe they're gonna keep it on the ground here as far down as they are. Here's Rucker, he's gonna give it to Jones. Jones goes off the middle and he's oh, taken nice. down and yeah, it's gonna nice, bring up a nice huge play. fourth down. And a great McCracken. job by Damon McCracken. Went My low. Goodness, he is everywhere, Darren. He is everywhere. What a hard-nosed player that young man is. Yes, he is. So here we go, fourth and four from the 33. Steeman and Jones also assisting on the tackle. Big play here for the Cougars. Glenville's going to go for it. This could be the play of the game with 7.38 to go. Rucker is in the gun. He's got number seven, Deshante Jones, in the backfield with him. He's also flanked off to the right by Jamari Townsend, number 12. Let's see if Townsend plays into this role here. There's Rucker. He's going to throw the ball. He looks down the left side. He's got his man out there, and he's got a completion. What a great catch. And Witten is, is just reliable, Darren, just reliable as he picks up another Leland Smith first down. Yeah, Parker's right there. You can't fault the defense, defensive effort. I mean, he's on top of him. That's just a great catch. You noticed all game long the one kid they're not throwing to his side of the field is Mr. Wessel. Yeah, absolutely. We've not called his name much tonight because they have not well, tried to attack he him. he had a fantastic game last week. He was our Stolly Highlight Insurance player of the game, so he did a great job last week. 
Yeah, that's just a nice uh, catch there by a Division One athlete. First and 10 on the 21. That's where Glenville takes over here. Here comes number seven, Deshante Jones, as he goes up through the middle of that line. And they continue to pound up through the middle of the line, Deshante Jones. McCracken on the tackle with Bear. Darren, you said it earlier, that offensive line for Glenville is just so big and so athletic. And Van Wert's done an admirable job tonight mm -hmm. trying to, do, to defend that run, but boy, they just keep coming at you. They, they just keep, keep coming, coming at you, you and you know they lower their level and create space with their size and their length. There's Rucker in the gun. He's got Deshante Jones, number seven, off to his left shoulder. 6.07 to go. This is Rucker. He's going to give the ball to Jones. Jones goes off the left side, and he's approached, hit hard by Aiden Pratt. But oh, the ball's, ball's on the turf, and the there's Cougars got it. There's your turn we the, were looking for. Yep, there's the break they were looking for. There's a flag on the play. Hang you gotta on. Believe, you got to believe it's going to be a hold. If it's thrown in the, in the vicinity of where I think it is, it's a hold. Could be, and let's see what they're going to do here. Boy, what a play by Pratt. He oh just got away goodness. from him. And because of not just Shante Jones is trying to make his make hay there, he just fumbles the ball on the extra effort, and Van Wert's going to get the ball back. Was it a beanbag instead of a flag? Could have been a beanbag. You're right, a beanbag. You're right. They've been to mark. Say the, that fast uh, five times. Beanbag, beanbag. <laughs> That's right. So here we go. There's Van your Wirt. turnover. 5:55 to go. Van Wert's last stand here. Maybe so. Let's see if the Cougars can take advantage of it. They're going to put. Pratt in the shotgun position. They've got Parker off to his right side. They've got trips to the left. Parker goes in motion. Pratt's going to get the snap. He looks across the field. He's going to throw deep down the right side. Oh, a lot of contact. A lot of contact and no flag. And Phillips was out there defended by three tar blooders. Boy, they went for the home run ball there, did they not? Sure did. Good piece of officiating. Excuse me right there as they're coming in separating both ball clubs. Stoppage in play here. 5.49 to go. I'm sure there's some chirping going on in the secondary there right now. There was a flag thrown. They moved the ball okay. up. Okay. Moved the ball up to the 20. Uh, Did we get the preliminary five, indication? Uh, first and 10 from the 20, so I, I'm not real sure what the call was. We didn't get a call here. Here's Pratt, he's in the empty backfield. He throws off to the right side. He's got a man out there just oh, over. He was him. there. He had, him. he had number 10 out there wide open. And that was Garrett Gunter, and he had beat his man mm. down the right side. Put a little and, air under that one. Yeah, he did. It kind of went a little quick, kind of, kind of quick there. Well, he's seeing a different look here by Glenville. I mean, they're putting, they're just taking Reeves, and they're moving him all over the place trying to find a mismatch on that interior line of Van Wert. Van Wert doing a real admirable job holding their own. Here's Pratt and throws down the right middle of the field. He's going to overshoot his receiver, and he had him out there. Number three, Connor Campbell. He had beaten number 10 for the Tar Blooders as they were in a one-on-one -on -one situation. He had Gerald Godwin out there, and he just beats him down the field. But Pratt overshoots him, and that's going to bring up third and 10. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Godwin's getting called to the sidelines by his assistant coach. You, Darren, I, I want to ask you, do you think he's overshot two receivers now? Do you think he's having trouble planting off that foot? Uh, could be, maybe, I, I don't know. That could, that could have some effect on it. The tape, maybe not get, be able to get his feet completely set. There goes Pratt as he rolls over, looking downfield, throws in the middle, and he's got a man out there, and he's got a completion. Number oh, three, right at the sticks. Connor Campbell, and is it a first down? Sure is. And they're calling it a Leland Smith first down. So, wow, just in the nick of time, they convert the first down, and they move the chains. Aiden Pratt rolls around and gets his man. What a heady play by Campbell. And there's an incomplete pass out, and they were going for number three, Connor Campbell. As they kind of quick snap the ball. Well, they're, they're not shying away no, from the they DBs, are, not, are no, they? They are going right at the Tar Blooder DBs. And let's see. A here. lot of contact on this this particular play. Let's see if there was some contact. So Pratt rolls to the right. And he, well, no, I don't think he got enough to call. Free ball. Really, I really, yeah, I think you're right. I think it's a good call. So here comes Pratt in the empty backfield. He's got two to the right, three let's to the see left. If, let's see if Pratt doesn't keep the ball the way they're playing this right now. 
there's no linebacker in the middle of the field. Well, they've stopped play again, so let's see what they're going to call here. I think they got Campbell with the equipment. It's a, you're right, it is an equipment issue. So they're going to take uh, number three, Connor Campbell, off to the side. I'm just wondering if Van Wertz doesn't see this. I mean, they are opening the middle of the field up. Glenville yes, is are. defensively. So here's Pratt as he's flanked by Parker okay, off to they the right adjusted. side. They got two to the right, two to the left. Here's Pratt in the gun. They're going to move Parker off to the right side. Pratt looks down the field. He throws off to the left. He's got his man out there. A nice catch by Crutchfield. Just about got oh, away from his defensive that's back. A that's a touchdown save. Oh, you're right. right there. Crutchfield, get, if he gets away from him, he goes He's down gone. the sideline and nobody catches him. You watch it right here. He just about got away from him. That's a heck of a solo tackle there by number 10. Great job. So here's Good Pratt one. in the gun. He's going to keep it himself as he goes up the middle. And not much of a gain as he is met by big number 55, Khalil Pipkins, the 5'10", 255-pound junior or senior, excuse me, as he just knocks him down from the defensive line position. I'll tell you, for having a bad ankle, he certainly showed no he's ill not, effects right there, did he? has he? No. There he goes again as he's in the gun with Parker off to his left side. Two to the right, two to the left. 4.32 to go here. Glenville leads 34 to 27. Pratt looks off to his coaches. Goes back up to the line of scrimmage. Pratt. Oh, Keeps there's an opening. Goes the hole. There goes Pratt up the side, and a great play by Aiden Pratt as he faked a little shovel pass out to the sure side, did. and he goes through the hole that they had created so well by the offensive line. Watch this play. What a great play. Yep, somebody in the press box for Van Wert seen an opening there. They pulled Jackson Jones from his guard position, and he comes across the line and makes a huge block. That'll bring up a first and 10 from the 45. So this is Aiden Pratt's. Prize drive here with 3.55 to go. Here's Pratt again as he looks across, throws down the middle. He got a man out there. He's got Critchfield. He's got him at the 35. Oh, and he about Just broke about that one. away as he was in single coverage by Gerald Godwin, number 10 for the Tar Blooders. Well, and remember how many times has Godwin been beat yes, tonight? Yes, you're right. You're right. Absolutely. And the assistant coach called him over and said, hey, you've got to give him a little bit of space. So here comes Pratt in the empty backfield. He's got three to the right, two to the left. Sitting first and 10 from the 35, 33, Pratt's rolling to the right. He's just had to throw that away because he was under heavy pressure, and that's a heady play by Aiden Pratt. I guess who was bearing down on him? <laughs> Avril Reese. They've become really Reese. good friends tonight. Oh, yeah, they both tied <laughs> one another on the rear that's end. Right, yep. Let's play on. But if they open the middle of the field up and, and they can get a slot on a linebacker, Second 10 from the 33. Boy, oh boy. Pratt's got Parker off to his right side. He's got his trip receivers to the right, and they're bunched up at the line of scrimmage. He's got a single Phillips on the left side. Pratt's going to roll to the right. He's going to throw it out there. He's got his man at the sure sticks, does. and it's first another down. Leland Smith first down. So an absolute strike to Garrett Gunter, who has been open a lot tonight in the backfield, and he finally connects with Aiden Pratt. Watch, Watch this. this. Watch this yes. block right here by Parker. Boom. Yeah, it kept Reese right off of it. Kept Gives Reese time. right off his back, so didn't here's he? Pratt rolling to his left. He's looking down the field. He throws down to the end zone. Oh, and almost a great catch out there. The intended target was number three, Connor Campbell, and he had his man Heck beat. of a throw, was it? was it? a great throw, and he put it in the only place he could mm -hmm. put it. To the outside and right there to the boundary. So 3-10 to go until this one's called official. Van Wert down 34-27 to the number one team in the state. Here comes Pratt. He's got Parker to the right side. He's got oh, three to the they right. They decided to move Mr. Reeves back, didn't they? Yes, they did. Pratt's going to take the snap, looks down the field, throws to the right side. He's got his man out there, and that's number 11, Maddox Crutchfield. And he's about a yard, yard and a half from a first down. That'll take it up into the young waist red zone. Jalen Carter on the stop, pushing him out of bounds. Our Red Zone sponsor is Young's Transfer Station. Whatever the job, when you're ready to dump your junk, bring it to Young's over to the public Monday, Friday, 8 to 4. Two Here down territory for the Cougars. Pratt, he's got Critchfield in the slot position. They're going to fake the little toss out there. They tried that before, Ooh. and Pratt's going to go up, and he's going to be short about, yep. a, about a yard, half a yard to a first down. Darren, that's going to bring up fourth down. This is a huge play. Fourth and two from the 13-yard line. 
and 2.45 to go, the play of the game. You gotta believe Cleveland Glenville's gonna stack the line. And let's see what happens here. Yeah, they try that little fake pitch there to draw Glenville to the foot, or to uh, Parker. Well, Van Wert's gonna talk react. about it. Yeah, Van Wert's gonna talk about it. We'll take a break here in the booth. Glenville leads 34 to 27. Tonight's scoreboard is Loudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them in Coldwater or Van Wert or online at Loddix.com. Loddix Jewelry is our scoreboard sponsor. The premier sponsor for Van Wert Cougars is Cary Insurance in Grover Hill. Get a quote and see how much you can save. Cary Insurance is our premier sponsor. So partner, 238 to go from the 13-yard line. The season on the line. Van Wert down 34-27, fourth and two. What say you on the call? You're the coach now, Gilly. What do you say? Not a football guy. You're putting too much pressure on me. I like keeping it's the got, ball. It's got it's got to be something high percentage and you know low risk. So here's Pratt as he's got Parker off to the left. He's in the gun. He takes the snap. A little shovel pass to Critchfield, and they're going to get the first down. What a play! If not, he's close. It's going to be real close. It looked like he had it to me. I, I got. Maddox Critchfield catches a little shovel pass. And it's going to be real close. Let's see if they bring in the chains to measure it. If it's not a first down, it is inches away. And Glenville's saying no. Van Wert saying yes. Let's see what they – look at the spot of the ball. It's going to be real it's close. It's going to be as close as you can imagine. And they got it, a first oh down. My goodness. A huge, huge That's play by the Cougars. Momentum right oh there. my goodness, Glenville was sure they had stopped him short. And the Cougars pick up the first down with 2.34 to go. It's going to make it first and 10 from the 13. That puts them in the Young's Waste Red Zone. Well, you took a little bit of the air out of their sails defensively. Now let's see if you can't take and punch that thing into the end zone. Here comes Pratt as he's got Parker off to the right. He's got two receivers to the right, two receivers to the left. He's in the gun. He takes the snap, looks across the field. He rolls to his right, throws back a got He's got him. He's got his man. And it's oh, deflected. It's and it's touched. It oh, they're oh, calling out of bounds. Him out of they're bounds. calling Phillips out of bounds. The ball was tipped, and Phillips comes to the back of the end zone, catches the ball. we got to see this on replay, Darren. That's awful close. Yep. But here, here's the replay. Let's take a look at it as Pratt – Throws the ball to the end zone, rolls to his right, and the ball gets tipped. And Phillips catches the ball. He and sure he was, was out of bounds. He, he was sure out of bounds. was. That's a great call. Yeah, a great call by the official. Great call by and great coverage by our instant replay. <laughs> our instant <laughs> replay job. Lee Kinzel is our instant replay sponsor tonight. And what a great call by our crew down there. So here comes Pratt with Parker to the left, two to the right, two to the left. Pratt's going to look across. He throws to the right side. He's got his man out there to the five-yard line. He'll be pushed out of bounds. That's going to bring up a big third and about five with 2.10 to go. Darren, i got to ask you this question. I know we're early, and we haven't seen it yet. If Van Wert gets the touchdown, do they go for two? That's I mean, that's, <laughs> that's a decision that Coach Recker and his staff is going to – But know, I'm sure yeah. they probably talked about it. Absolutely. In every game situation. And I think he's going to go to his seniors. I think he's going to ask them. I really do. Well, he's going to have to get it in the end zone first here. Third and five from the five. This is a huge third down. There goes Parker in motion. Here's Pratt. Throws the ball to the end zone, and he overshoots number 10, Garrett Gunter. So now a big fourth down. Tough break. And five from the and, – and they can get a first down correct, Darren, before yes, they, they – Yes, they can. They can get, get it to about, about the, the yard the and a half. Line. Yeah, yard and a half. You're right. But that's one of those where – a little bit lower because there was a seam there. Just couldn't connect. Well, here we go. The play of the game. 2.06 to go. Glenville ahead 34 27. Pratt's in the empty backfield. Oh, oh and boy. Glenville jumps. Glenville jumped. They the hard counted. They hard counted the Glenville Tar Blooders and they jumped. And what a play by Aiden Pratt. And they're going to get a first and goal here. You have got to be kidding me. Big number 50. Oh, my goodness. Freddie Johnson. And they're not calling. Wait, wait a minute. Is it not? Oh, it's encroachment. But it was it was fourth. It was third and fourth and five. Fourth and four, maybe. 
It's not a first down. I, I apologize. It is not a first yeah, down. It's half the distance, half, right, yes, to the goal? Half, yeah, you're right, yeah. And big for Eddie Johnson, the Division I recruit. So half the distance, and they couldn't. Well, put it that's up still yeah. fourth and two is better than fourth and four. Absolutely. So fourth and two. Here come the Cougars. 2.06 to go. Pratt's in the gun. He's got Parker off to his left. There goes Crutchfield in motion. Here goes Pratt. He's going to roll to his left. He's throwing to the end zone. And he's got oh, it. He's out got to him. Phillips got it. Phillips he's got, got him it. for a touchdown. It's a touchdown. It's it a Cougar sure touchdown. Is. He finds number six, Nate Phillips. He threw a strike, and Nate Phillips catches it right at the goal line and rolls what in. What a beautiful catch. And they have called it a touchdown now. The officials are talking right now. Did he get in? They signaled touchdown, correct? Yes, they signaled touchdown. What a beautiful catch. Look at on wow. replay. What? Yes, it he is sure across is. the He's goal across line. the goal line. That oh. is six points. 34-33 with 2.01 to go. Let's wait and see what the Cougars are going to do. They're talking with Aiden Pratt right now. I th partner, I think they're going to go for two in the win with 2.01 to go. Here comes Pratt. I, I you can almost guarantee when he comes out here, Glenville's going to take a timeout. Uh, I, I it's going to be a chess would. match. I would imagine they would. Unbelievable. Another Kitchens Incorporated touchdown. Touchdowns are presented by Kitchens Incorporated and Van Wert. They have GE appliances and specialize in all your kitchen and bathroom remodeling needs. Stop in, call Shea today for a free estimate. So, partner, this is unbelievable. This is what we love to do, Gilly. This is what we live for here. This is Northwest Ohio football. You got your best. answer, didn't That's you? That's right, I did. Here comes the Cougars. They're going to go for Watch two Glenville and the win. Watch here and see if he's going to burn one. They got Parker. There goes Critchfield in motion. Pratt's going to take the snap. He's looking through, rolling to oh, his right. He's got, he's got Critchfield out there. He oh, misses him. And he he it. misses him. Oh, that's Critchfield, unfortunate. Critchfield, he just throws it out of his reach. Now, partner, there's 2.01 to go here. So, plenty of time here. The Cougars have three timeouts. Glenville gets the ball, and watch this replay. He had him open and just through the outstretched arms. Yeah, he had him, had him just missed him. So with 2.01 to go, Glenville still leads 34. Th I love the call, Darren. I, do I don't too. care what they say. I don't care how it ends. I love the call. Absolutely. Coach Recker is aggressive, and he wants to win this game, and he's playing to win this game. So here we go now with 2.01 to go. You got you to gotta believe that Van Wert's going to you know, use those timeouts and force them to. Uh, and if you're Glenville. You know what? You're playing in conditions that. Have, have that, have, <laughs> yeah. that has presented problems tonight with fumbles and you know, sure. being put on the ground. You may see an onside kick right here. Well, let's see what they do with 2 0 to go. That's interesting. You want to keep it away from Sean Williams, and they've done a pretty good job here in the second half of doing that. So this one's going to go down, partner, as one of the greats this year. Sure we, is. We thought we'd saw it all last week with the Cougars and the 40-35 win over West Holmes. But, boy, this one has been an absolute treat. I promise you, either coach, whoever wins this game tonight, this film is going to be a hot ticket for the remaining three clubs, you know. So let's see what Van Wert does as Glenville puts all their athletes up to the line of scrimmage as they are – yeah, Glenville's going to take a timeout with 2.01 to go here in the fourth quarter. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. Glenville leads 34-33. We're back here at Frost Canal Stadium with 2.01 to go in the fourth quarter. Glenville leads 34-33. And they're getting ready for the kickoff, Gilly. They've got their good hands people up on the line of scrimmage, and they've got one guy back deep. And it does not appear to be Sean Williams. You just wonder why Williams is not back well, deep. Well, he, he, he came off very gingerly yeah, in the yeah, last possession, yeah. and he may be dinged up. Let's see what Van Wert does here as they are bunched up at the line of scrimmage. Damon McCracken getting ready to kick the ball. Oh, he's and picking I, his I, spot, yeah, I think he? he is. I think they are going to go Pratt's on this side here. with Gunter. Oh, and a great job by Deshante Jones to recover at number seven. He does a great job of falling on the ball there. 
So that's going to be an interesting situation. That's going to bring up first and 10 from the 49. So Van Wert's going to make a stand here. They've got three timeouts left. Glenville's yeah, got nice one Nice job timeout. right here by the young man just falling on the football. That's a heady play by Glenville. You got to believe a first down is pretty well going to ice the game if you're in Right, right. At the two-minute mark here, you're absolutely right. This is one if you're Van Wert, you're wishing that the ball gets put on the turf. So here comes Rucker in the gun. He's got going to hand the ball off to number seven and not much of a game there. Deshante Jones as he goes through the line and crutch, or excuse me, McCracken meets him head on. Also number 55. 15, Aiden Pratt Aiden also Pratt in there. Also timeout in there, yeah. Van Wert. Van Wert takes a timeout. They've got two left, 155. That'll bring up second and 10 from the 49. So not, not much of a gain there at all. Season 18 of the Sports Report is underway every Friday night at 10 p.m. on WTLW. Join Patrick Kamler for a full hour of the most comprehensive football coverage around all season long, Fridays at 10 p.m. on WTLW. Take a look at our upcoming schedule. Sunday on WSN, Antwerp and LCC, Lima Central Catholic in the regional finals, Columbia Station in Columbus Grove at 5.30, and at 8 o'clock, Fort Laramie in New Bremen. Big showdown in that one down there. Next week on WSN, the Columbus Grove and Bath girls basketball game. Wednesday at 8, Friday at 11, Shawnee and LCC in the big time Elida tip-off. Also Saturday at 12.30, Bath and Elida in the other game in the Elida tip-off. So that's right. That's what, that's what I was just yes, going to bring up say, and ask. Is LCC, you know, is LCC going to play him at no. if, if their boys end up winning they tonight? Uh, the voice of God said no, they will not be playing in that. So here comes the Tar Blooders. They'll hand the ball at the... Number seven as he's taken oh down at the line boy. of scrimmage and a great job. Sure was. They Somebody had him by Deshante the ankles. Deshante Jones and Deshante Jones just going to the line of scrimmage and McCracken. just stopping. And another timeout. So a 148 to go here, Darren. This is a huge play at sure third is. and ten. Steeman McCracken. And Jones. really, really, if you're Glenville, Darren, and you throw the ball and you get an incompletion, Van Wert doesn't have to take a timeout. you got to believe that they're going to run the ball. Now, is Witten going to factor into this, maybe squirt him out a little bit and throw a little screen pass to him or something? But you take a huge gamble when you put Ooh. the ball in the air. Yeah, and they're ball hawks in the secondary. You know, coming into this football game, Van Wert, five interceptions from Wessel. Five from Crew, Bear with four. Carson Smith now with four. Here we go, partner. Third and 11 from the 50. I'm like you, though. I think, well, they're putting Witten in the backfield, right? They've but got, you're right. They may swing him out. Well, they're going to put him in the slot position. They're going to bring him to the line in the tight end position. They've got Deshante Jones in the backfield with Rucker. Here we go. 148 to go. Rucker's going to oh, throw. Gonna He's under heavy pressure. Here comes Aiden Pratt. Rucker's going to throw to the right side. He's got Witten out yep. there. And I told you, Gilly, Witten was going to play the a length. huge factor in that. And he goes out of bounds. Yep, the length played a big part right there. He is just Parker a, tried. Yeah. And you knew that Witten was coming across the backside. And he had him open. And he finds him out there. And that, my friend, is a huge gain for the Glenville Tar Blooders. They drug him right along the line of the scrimmage, right in front of the linebackers, and Parker just was a step behind. So Van Wert's got one timeout left where they can stop the game. Here's Rutgers, he's got Deshante Jones in the backfield. Here comes Jones, he goes off the left, and he's gonna be taken down right at the line of scrimmage, maybe a gain of one. Van Wert will use their last timeout. And that extensively can do it here. As they'll First, McCracken, yeah. Crutchfield, Steeman, all on the stop. Yeah, that's so a big, big first down that Glenville that is just a had. Huge first down, partner. So with 1.35 to go, Glenville leads 34 37. It'll bring up second and 10. Van Wert has no timeouts left. And uh, unless uh, something big happens, partner, the Tar Blooders are going to move on to the state semifinals. Hey, you know what? Until that thing goes zero, zero, Absolutely. zero. Coach Recker and his staff and players are not going to quit. So you just got to hope that they put the football on the turf or throw it to somebody with a red helmet and white jersey on. So an absolute fantastic game here tonight between Cleveland Glenville and Van Wert with 1.35 to go. 
And we're down 34-33. They went for a two-point conversion with two minutes to go to try to win this one. I love the call, Gilly. I, I, I will go down in history saying that was the right call by Coach sure was. Absolutely. He played to win the game. So here they go, 135 to go. Rutgers in the gun. He's got number seven, Deshante Jones, off to his right. Man, we're saying the man jumped on the offensive line. Here comes Deshante Jones. He's going to get a big time first down, and he's going to take it into the end zone. He gets off to the right side, and he goes in for a, <coughs> excuse me, for a Kitchens Incorporated touchdown. And that will pretty much seal the deal as Deshante Jones goes around the right side. And watch this. He did jump. He flinched, and they did he not sure call it. Did. He absolutely flinched, and they did not call it. That is, that is big, tough that's a, to take. That's a big one right that, there. Um, how do you miss that, Gilly? I, look, I don't complain a lot about the officiating, but you cannot miss that in that type of play right there. Wow. <sighs> That's going to make it 40 to 33 with 126 to go. And Glenville is going to take a timeout here with 126 to go. So, look, a great game by both squads. And not that that play decided this game. We're going to take a break, step aside, and when we come back, we'll go 126 to go in this one. Welcome back to Frost Canal Stadium here at Tiffin, where with 126 to go, the Glenville Tar Blooders have scored another touchdown. They're going to go for two here. They've got number seven, Deshante Jones, in the Wildcat package. He's going to take the direct snap, and they move again, and they're going to call this one. Uh, Are they going to? Well, I think they did. Okay. Uh, number 75. Mr. Smith. Letters, Braylon Smith jumps the gun there, and they call that one. So a great, great season by the Van Wert Cougars will come to an end. They will finish out the year 12-2. and two. And you take a look at their only losses of the year, Darren. They lost a crazy game to Wapakoneta on a block punt, and they lose to the number one team in the state that they very well could have beaten tonight. So just a great season for Coach Recker and the Cougars and that whole community. you got to be thrilled to death with what they're I'm going to wait for the 112 off the clock. <laughs> You're going to wait. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm going to wait. You know. They played with no fear the whole season long. Nobody expected them to be in this position. And you know what? The kids that's going to be coming back on that football field is going to believe that they can score. And there's Rucker as he finds Witten again for the two-point conversion. And he is absolutely – Darren, I'm going to say it again. He, I, I think he's the best player on this team. Well, he is fantastic. I'm, I'm trying to think if I had wrote down here. It says here, Damar and Witten is a the Big Ten. Yeah. Four, he's a four-star. He's a four-star recruited yeah. by all the Big Ten schools. Uh, yeah, he's he's he is a real talent. He is a real talent. You know, credit to Van Wert for this battle tonight. You you know, I don't know if we went over everything here, but Arvell Reese, a high state commit, senior four-star, Braylon West, run back, running back, linebacker, MAC Division II recruit, senior. Uh, Bryce West, running back, DB, four-star, SEC, Big Ten recruit, only a junior. Ushante Jones, running back, quarterback, three-star, the MAC in the Big Ten. He's only a junior. Number 19, Demarion Witten, wide receiver, tight end, four-star. Big Ten schools are all over him, only a junior. Freddie Johnson, offensive line, defensive line, three-star, has offers from Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan State, only a junior. Malik Davis, wide receiver, defensive back, and a Mac in Division II recruit, a senior, and Braylon Smith, the offensive lineman, defensive lineman, also a Mac in Division II recruit. So a lot of kids that you're going to see playing at the next level for the Tar Bloods. And Van Wert has went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them tonight. Absolutely. So Glenville leads 42-33 to with 126. They'll kick the ball deep down the middle of the field. Brought at that five-yard line by Van Wert, bringing up through the middle. So number six, Phillips. Phillips, and he tries to get away from him. That's Heck a of an effort. Job. Absolutely. He'll be taken down at about the 22-yard line. That's where Aiden Pratt and the Cougars will take over with 117 to go. Yeah, the two-point conversion was the one that probably put the nail in the coffin for Van Wert, so to speak. They had it. 
you know, if they didn't convert, they would have kept it at a seven-point right. game. But Absolutely. This now makes it a two-possession game with 117 to go. So here's Pratt in the gun. He's got Parker off to the right side. He's going to roll off to his right side, look down the field, and he throws down the right sideline, just overshoots his receiver. His intended target was number 10 Hunter. for the Cougars. Garrett Gunter just overshot out of his outstretched arms. That'll bring up second and 10 from the 21-yard line with 1.12 to go. you got to believe they're going to work that sideline, Darren. They have no timeouts sure. left, so you can't go down the middle much. Here's Pratt as he's in the empty back set. He's got two to the right, two to the left. Looks down the middle, steps up in the pocket, and he's going to be taken down right there uh, by Arvell Reese. That's the first sack of the night by Reese as he's been hounding Pratt all night. Yeah, Reeves finally got in there and was able to bring him down. Not a clean hit, but got him by the ankles. There goes Pratt down the middle, or down the left sideline. The intended receiver was Phillips, and he was guarded heavily by number nine, Malik Davis. And Phillips wanted a flag called. I'm not quite sure why Glenville's secondary are complaining for offensive pass interference. Yeah, I'm not real sure about that one at all. Bring up. Fourth and eight with 50 seconds to go here. Van Wert obviously going to go for it. Pratt's got Parker off to the left of him. He'll take the snap. He's going to throw down the right side, far down the right sideline. He's got a man out there, and it is going to be, oh, my goodness, almost caught but it'll go out of bounds and it's intended for Critchfield and that'll turn the ball over on down. So yeah, I actually lost the football. Now Tarblooders will take it over first down and 10 from the 25. You got to believe that they're going to go into victory formation. I can't imagine running a play with 42 seconds to go. Uh, you would think. 11, I would, I would hope not. I would hope Coach Ginn would not do that. So Cleveland Glenville will move on 13-0. They'll continue the unbeaten season. Uh, defensively, they give up 4.6 a game, and they gave up 33 tonight to Van Almost Wars. 35. Yeah, almost 35, so unbelievable effort by the Cougars. And uh, that is exactly what Glenville is going to do. They'll go into victory formation as Rucker will go under center. Not real sure what they're looking at the sideline they were missing somebody. For. No, they're not. They had 12 out there. Six. I'm not sure what they're doing. take the snap there. They'll take a knee. And they'll, that'll bring up second down. And they'll have to do one more, partner. One more snap, and that should do it. They did not reset the game clock. Well, maybe they won't have to take another knee here. with 14 seconds to go. Yes, they will take that. They did not reset the play clock, so that's going to do it. The Cleveland Glenville Tarblooders win the regional championships 42 to 33. I want to say thank you to our director, Ben Reif, replay Megan Sherry, cameras Lexi Waddle, Caitlin Henderson, Chloe Waddle, Clay Jordan. We take a look at our Division Four at Racket here, and Glenville will move on. They'll play the Jefferson area team in the Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium. That's over at Canton. Canal Fulton. That's right. Yep, yep. Canal yep. Fulton High School. Right. Yep. Yeah, Canal Fulton. So, and there again is our crew. Ben Reif, Megan Sherrick, Lexi Waddle, Kaylin Henderson, Clay Jordan, and Chloe Waddle. A fantastic job for them. Great job. Master Control, Kelly Getz and Nick Fraley from Frost Canal Stadium. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Darren Gilbert. We thank you for watching High School Sports on WOSN.